and welcome to the 72 Pin Connector Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation in not the game this week, because we aren't playing one. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's a special podcast, actually. This is, uh, for one, it's Halloween, so happy Halloween, gentlemen. And it is uh, four years of podcasting, the four-year 72 PC anniversary. That, that, Holy crap, time. guys. We've been doing this for four <laughs> years. What happened? Uh, I'm announcing my retirement, and it's been too long. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, okay, see you. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. This is the longest standing... Iter- Bye, Tom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, longest standing iteration of 72, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. The original lasted two and a half, three years. Um, so, yeah, this is currently the longest running one. Uh, which means we're either doing something well or terribly. I'm not sure which yet. Uh, yeah. We're doing One something fun. <clears throat> yes. I think, uh, frankly, the whole reason why 72 Pin Connector isn't dead yet is because I keep going A side. And as you can see, my team isn't here <laughs> uh, because they all rushed B. So because uh, I'm not there to fuck to everything it. up, yeah, it just keeps going. You hate to see it. Yeah, that's that's said, more uh, play the objective, people. Come on. Yeah, I know. That said, um, that is something fun about this iteration of 72 is we have been way more community centric. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, I, I haven't been involved in all of the iterations, but the ones I have, this is absolutely the most community centric version of it we've ever had. By far. Yeah, and, uh, you know, frankly, we really just have Discord to thank for that. Uh, before, yeah, kind of, you know, <laughs> didn't really have a centralized base. Like the closest thing we had was a Steam group that saw very, very occasional usage. Um, so having one like home base to center around has been key. Okay, and can I call out real quick? So I got a random Steam message. And I'm looking. I'm like, I don't have a message from anyone. And then I go down in the organization of the Steam hierarchy, and I see it's a group message. And I'm like, God, mm-hmm. oh, I missed one from the podcast because when we're in Rocket League, we have one just between us for casting. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, no, this is a 72 pin connector group. Fucking people started spamming or messaging there, like Magic Dave and Bird are in there putting messages and shit. <laughs> That's awesome. It is fantastic. So yeah, that group still exists. It has the old logo. Uh, I I need to update that. I'm not going to, but I need to. Speaking of, I, I did I did wrap our coffee stain shirt, but I was trying hey. to find my uh, black and gray. 72 pin connector one that goes across the bottom. <laughs> yeah. I love the coffee stain. The coffee stain might be my favorite logo we've ever put out. Agreed. I don't, I kind of like the new one, honestly, but no, I, I love our new one, but we didn't put that one out. Like that That's one true. we didn't have anything to do with. That was yeah. um, Cowboy over at Upper Limit. He did great work on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. But yeah, four years. One Holy day, crap. One day I'm going to get uh, our shop updated with all the, the new stuff. <laughs> We actually have some people pretty anxious for that. I know. That would be cool. We'll keep waiting. <laughs> keep on <a> waiting. <laughs> but no, four years, I think this is a good opportunity to really really thank everybody. Um, thanks to everybody in the community, everybody that's listening. Even if you're not in our community and our Discord and stuff, if you're just you know, one of those audio podcast listeners that download every week or whenever, thanks for, thanks for everything. We couldn't. It's, I mean, uh, it's been wild. Yeah, it's, it's been absolutely wild. Uh, it sounded like you were about to say the cliche. We couldn't have done. We it couldn't have done this without you. you. I started to, and then I, I realized mean, no, that, we like, we. I mean, yeah, we. I we really? we're gonna do it either way, <laughs> right? But it yeah, would not be nearly. Like it would not have been nearly as rewarding and fun, and we wouldn't have met all the amazing people we've met. Like yeah, we could, I, we I could have done it without you, but we would not have enjoyed it without you. Yeah, we would be casting to absolutely no one forever in perpetuity. In yeah. that kind of thought. But yeah, so uh, how's your guys' week been? What's up? Just work. <laughs> Just, Just work. Work. Uh, work was so harrowing uh, the past couple of weeks that uh, I decided to take some vacation days. So uh, I have got Monday and Tuesday off of work. I've got a big-ass four-day-long weekend. It's going to be amazing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, my week well, I had a little bit of work, but I was in a weird spot. Um, and I did a decent amount of gaming, but 
it was done on one of these. I did a lot. Is that a of Game Boy mobile. Color? No, yeah, it no. looked like a weird Game Boy. I did a lot Is that of a Switch mobile Mini? gaming. Neo Geo. No, it, it's a, a, uh, is that a Nokia is that, to end game? Is that the Sega Nomad? No, it's the Game Gear. I don't. I don't want to go full Sega. I, I want the mobile version. Is that the Wonder Swan color? What is that? <laughs> what the are hell making, is that? Are you just making stuff up now, Tom? No, the Wonder Swan was actually a thing. You can't put <laughs> random word in front of animal and make it a console, Tom. That's not how this works. Wonder Swan. Let me see. I'm. I, I did it. Yep. There we go. By Bandai. Okay. Look at that. It's beautiful. It, it was the Wonder Swan, the Wonder Swan color, and apparently they came out with the Swan Crystal. This system is the only handheld system to have two D-pads on the left side. Wow. Why do you need two D-pads on the left side? Let Bandai tell you. <laughs> um, they can't. That's why. Yeah. And also possibly why none of us ever heard of this damn thing. Yeah. I almost bought one. Like when <laughs> I was a kid. Tom buys everything. And if he almost bought it, that probably means it wasn't a good product. No, like, it wasn't. Tom, you're the you're the kind of kid that I imagine growing up. At some point, you got your hands on a fucking Jaguar. No, I wish the the one thing like my gaming magnum opus that I wanted as a kid, and I still don't have this. I wanted a Sega CD purely for one game. Mm. I wanted Sonic CD, which it's fine. It wasn't even as good as Sonic Two. Yeah, I said it. Get fucked. Um, anyway. <laughs> I wanted a Sega CD and I never got it. Like that was the big thing. Like I didn't really care about the Virtual Boy, but shit, man, there was Sonic on a CD. Yeah, um, I actually had a uh, friend in elementary that had a Sonic CD, and we'd always play like RBI Baseball. That was mm. always our jam on that. Like that's an often forgot about console. Like I it was in that forget really about it regularly weird... until you guys bring it up once in a while. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. That was a thing. I never had one. It didn't, but... fit, it didn't fit into the pacing. Like yeah, it was yeah. Vegas foray into the Saturn before they full scale went Saturn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, you all are forgetting what put it on the map. Night trap. One of the games um, responsible for uh, the creation of the ESRB. Yes, yes, that fucking awful like uh mo not moat goddamn it, mo cap. Not um what FMV just... game. Yes, FMV, thank you. Yeah. So Night Trap, uh basically what you had to do is you could watch a select number of like security cameras and then trigger traps to catch like these weird I I don't know, trash bag wearing people and prevent them from like attacking and viciously murdering these girls that were in like skimpy pajamas. Uh, it was... And parents went nuts. The game sucked. Nobody would have paid attention to it. But now it's like this big ass cult classic because of all the controversy. The game <laughs> sucks. I always likened it to those murder mysteries, those really super cheesy ones mm -hmm. put into this. Like that, that's always, that was the kind of genre that it makes me think of. Yeah. Mm. It was a complete dog shit game from all accounts. I say, it doesn't sound but... like something <laughs> super enjoyable. No. It's not. not, not really. But here's here's the cool thing. Nintendo actually released a collector's edition uh, of it on the Switch recently. Oh, yeah. Really? Hmm. Yeah, you can buy Night Trap on the Switch. They are putting so much shit on the Switch. After being such a closed off platform for so long, they are putting some random ass shit on this since they finally yeah. figured out the internet exists. Well, not, not only that, but even in comparison to their competitors... There are certain types of adult titles that you cannot buy on an Xbox or a PlayStation, but you can buy it on the goddamn Nintendo Switch. Dude, there is straight up almost anime porn games on the Switch. <laughs> no, there is no almost. There are straight up anime porn straight games up. on the Switch. Like, I saw this and I'm like, am I looking at my Steam library on my Switch somehow? Not my library. What the hell am I saying? Am I looking at the <laughs> no, Steam no, 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 no. Go back. Rewind that a little bit. Your <laughs> library. Okay. Let's, so let's our, hear about your library. What, our what's friend in your library? D -Lads, our friend d -Lads, <laughs> um, actually, there was a lot of us that used to do this, had the tendency of buying the shittiest game possible Yep. for friends just to, you know, fuck with them. One of the years, he got me Honey Pop. 
<laughs> I mean, wait, what's that? I've never um, heard of this game. So I was going to stream it for a lost and found. Because like I had no clue no. really what it was. I just <laughs> no. knew that he bought it for me. And then I realized it's uh, Twitch didn't have it um, on uh, its yeah. tags for games. So I'm like, hold on. I don't see this on the tag for games. I should investigate this. Yeah, it's banned from Twitch. Ooh. Yes. It is an AO game. Like, it might not have an ESRB rating, but it's an adults-only game. Yeah, that 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 was one that Deli's gifted me. So he gave me that, and then the next year he gave me a lawnmower simulator game. <laughs> and you might you might think really cool tractor sim thing. No, we are talking like a high schooler's game design project type of game. <laughs> that is great. So almost as good as Super Bowl is what you're saying. Almost. Dude, that game has a following. We trashed on that so hard. I it's such a bad time. <laughs> it has a following. I'm, I don't know how. I think we were just, we wanted it to be something it wasn't. And I mean, I, and I think that well, thing was I, good. We even, we even tried to like it for what it was, <laughs> but you can't, you can't love a baby that looks like that. It's not possible. Tom is speaking from experience on this front. Exactly. I'm speaking from the heart about this. No, I think it was a great concept. I don't think they did awful with it. I just, the concept didn't make for a good video game for me. Now, obviously, there's people that disagree. I don't, it's not like hundreds of thousands. Like, there is no excuse for the menuing in you want. Okay, yeah, that was, I, I honestly, they probably fixed that by now. There's no way that game's still alive and they didn't fix that. I hope. Uh, I don't know. It, we should try it. it. It might still have the whole uh, launcher inside of a menu, inside of a browser, and, and then you launch the game. I don't, you know, it could, it could still have that. I don't know. Okay. Who knows? So, what was our biggest dumpster fire of a postcast game we've ever done? Was it Super Bowl or was it Moonbase no. Alpha? Moonbase Moon Alpha. Uh, I liked Moonbase Alpha. It was fun. I liked it too, but it was for a minute. It was dumb as shit. Yeah, it was dumb. Well, the, what, what we needed. did with it was dumb. That was not what that game was designed to be. <laughs> yeah, but they knew they what they were doing. Text, yeah. They put text to speak in there so people communicate because it's a problem-solving game. Yeah, but However, they, knew, turned, they, they knew what they were doing. When you could manipulate the voice, <laughs> too. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot about that. You know what you're going to do with text to speech. That's what you're gonna do. WWW. If any game embodied Bird to me, it was Moonbase Alpha. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If him and Magic Dave were to just play Moonbase Alpha together, why don't we do this? This sounds like a great time. Yeah. Uh we couldn't stream it. No. That's fine. All right. Yeah, that man, that, that has me going through my head on some of these old postcast games. Like there was the whole um what was it called? It was the tactical six man teams. Everyone had a ability they could use that was actually really good and free. Dirty giant, bomb? Dirty bomb. Dirty bomb. I almost said yes. giant bomb. That's the podcast. We wrecked shit playing dirty bomb. We for were a free really game? fucking stoppable. That was fun. For, for a, a free game, that game was great for a free game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I actually went back to it after the postcast and played it a couple times. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think all of us did. Uh, oh, postcast when we used to do those every week. <laughs> and then I lot. did. Uh, yeah, it, it was a lot because I was also in the era of three hour cast. Yeah, it was. Uh, and with the podcast we preps were longer back then because we didn't have it oiled so well. It yeah. was like, yeah. all right. We, an hour before the cast, we'll start prepping for the cast. We'll do the sound check. We'll get everything set up. And then we'll cast for three hours. And then we'll play a game for another two. And, and most of the time now, I don't show up until like 10 minutes before. It's like, hey, guys, I'll be there one day. Yeah, and well, And we also had the horrible post-production work that had to be done at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Adam had the brilliant idea of our new format. And then, wham, bam, thank you, man. We're getting shit done, and everything's going quick. Adam yeah. looks at our, current, uh, at our current setup, and he's like, hey, can we not? And we're like, oh, wait, we could just not. <laughs> and then we didn't. 
And it was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, man, that 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 got in a weird way. So, fellas, games. Games. All right. I didn't talk about this last week because I forgot, and that should tell you how much of an impact this game had on me. Uh, I finished Tacoma last week. Yeah, did it did it punch you in the face with the message at the end? Okay, no. And so there is no subtlety, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to spoil the ending, but I said I'm not going to spoil the ending, and now I can't make my point because it spoils the ending. I was going to say, like, I I was dumbfounded. Like, did Tom just drop? I, what just happened? Did, yeah, no. I I really I really you wish you could just spoil that. the ending. I could. I know old. we have kind of a no spoilers thing, but I think 90% of the people who would be watching this or listening probably have never heard of the game and probably will never play the game. Okay. And I'm those who want to already have. If you want to play minutes. Tacoma. <laughs> yes. For the next two minutes, fast forward. I'll give you a little bit of time now. Maybe maybe you're in the car. Maybe you're driving. Maybe something. I'm really just burning time at this point. Okay. So here it goes. Um, <laughs> nice touch. Video game stories, if they always have a happy ending, can sometimes rob the impact of the message you're trying to make. Tacoma has very specific points like, hey, uh, you know, a working class people decide or deserve to be treated like humans. Um, Really controversial shit, right? Like, hey, maybe don't vent these people out of an airlock so your shareholders can make more money. And like, I know... That's a no-go in most places in the world today. Um, For the most part, but yeah. at the end of the game, everybody, like, they get to a rescue ship and they make it off. And there was supposed to be this big conspiracy about how the company was going to kill them so they could get a law passed that forbids humans from working in space so they can increase their own profits, not to pay people. Okay, but... At the end of the game, everybody makes it off safely. And then the controversy you don't see is everything going nuts after the fact. We're like, hey, my company tried to kill me. And, you know, Twitter's going to go nuts on that for like at least two hours. Um, But it's going to be an intense two hours. Like, if you killed everybody, I would actually remember that game way, way more fondly. Yeah, it's not a happy ending, but... Jesus, you remember the story about, you know, the the game where the corporation decided to murder people for shareholder benefit instead of the game where they tried to murder people for shareholder benefit. But it's cool. Everything worked out hunky dory and they're all happy at the end. It it didn't didn't fit. I get made fun of because I agree with you. I I am typically the guy like I prefer the not happy story ending Mm -hmm. because I feel they tend to be more. I don't want to say realistic, just. They hit better. They hit harder to home. Yeah. They make me remember it better. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's different. I mean, Tacoma's it's... not exactly a long game, but it's not. It didn't really work for me. I like what it tried to do. It just didn't didn't really hit it. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, maybe that's probably eight why. 10, eight out of ten idea. Four out of ten execution. Um, for someone who likes walking sims, sorry, Adam. Um, would you recommend? That's a derogatory term. Um, well, that's why I apologize to you. Um, I didn't know what else. <laughs> if if you have it for free, because I know it was free on the Epic Games Shop for a while, it might be on Game Pass. Like, if you can play this for free and you're looking to burn a few hours on a story, sure. Yeah, it has some interesting things to look at, and the game is generally well made. If you're buying this, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend buying it, even at a low price like five bucks, unless you are truly desperate for that kind of content. Uh, you can find better games elsewhere. Like play, uh, play what remains of Edith Finch. That is far, far better uh, than Tacoma. It it deals with different things, obviously. But if you're in the mood for those style of games, Edith Finch is going to be the one you pick up over Tacoma. One more hypothetical. You have the game. Yeah. You're playing a lot of other stuff currently. Would you yeah. make time for it? No. Okay. If you are if you are like in the mood and desperate to play a walking simulator and the other night I was, then sure, yeah, it's a fine fit. But don't don't go out of your way to make this happen. It's not worth it. All right. Fair enough. Pretty much what I was I feel like about. a dick for saying that, but it's it's okay not to like a game. Not all games have to be like great A experiences that everyone loves and you want everyone to go play. Yeah. Mm. And this like is I, like, and this is Tom's personal opinion. It's not like he's saying 
these no, developers are trash and All they shouldn't have even bothered that. making this thing and it's awful and they did a bad job and they're bad people and they should have bad fates it's like no yeah it's like they made a thing and i hope they're proud of it and i hope other people like it but it's not for me and that's fine yeah it's definitely not the worst thing i've played and not even close to the worst walking simulator i've played it's just not as good as other things and i don't i think that often gets misconstrued today by comparison when you compare it to something it's like well this is better it doesn't mean that you think the original product is bad you just think there's better things out there that you could spend your time yeah. on yeah like hey is the mandalorian good yes is it breaking bad levels of good no nothing is <laughs> yeah i said it. i'm looking at you right now i said it i'm with tom on this one honestly we're gonna fight <laughs> We gonna fight? I haven't gotten into the second season yet, so no spoilers. But we you're gonna not, fight? Oh, you're, you haven't even scratched the surface, you kid. Yeah, you're. You're no, still. No, no, right. no, no, no. The Mandalorian. I, I've watched all of Breaking oh, Bad. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because we're walk, we're going through all of the Clone Wars animated series before we watch the Mandalorian season two, because I don't want to say too much, but there's there's potential. Supposedly, there's connections there, so we're wanting to watch all the Clone Wars, which is like seven seasons in a movie. Jesus. We're through a movie and almost through the second season. It's really good, though. I will say, if you enjoy Star Wars stuff, it takes Star Wars feel and makes it way more tactical, warlike strategy stuff. It's cool. really fun. Really, really fun. It's not a series made for kids like it may look like. Yeah. And Nightbot gets someone with the link. Ooh. No link for you. Hey, Ooh. buddy. You, uh, you banned. Sorry there, Bob. You banned. We don't want your views, follows, clicks, subs, following, oh, bot what, was and another stuff. one of those? Oh, fuck yourself. I, I just assume. Uh, yeah, when someone is. pops in here without saying a word and they get banned for a link, it's typically because, hey, he wants us to get a follow bot in here. It's a follow bot. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that noise. Banned <laughs> Anyway, Tom, you were doing some Quake Champions again. Still, Still digging it? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fucking fantastic. I was playing some CTF, and you know that moment in, like, old-school Unreal Tournament? You've got the flag, you're running, you hear the explosions behind you, you take a quick look back, everybody's dead, the other team is rushing at you, and you just need to get to the flag, and you're like, please, God, just six more feet! The entire fucking match felt that way, and it was so, so good! There was a lot of the... Oh god, he's gonna score, he's gonna score! Perfect rocket, the guy runs into the path of it, he explodes, you grab your flag real quick, it returns to base, then you grab theirs and make the return run. It's beautiful. Uh, I I am loving Quake Champion. Uh, and, and, it, like, so the each different character has their own special, like, ultimate ability, but they're kind of a, a sideline thing. Like, they're useful, and they've got, like, some, I guess, like, tactical help, but... It's not the whole game, right? Like, if you are bad at shooting and good at using your ultimate, you're going to be bad at this game. The game is still, like, 90% shooting people appropriately, and then 10%, when do I use this special thing that kind of helps me a little bit in some certain very unique situations? You, you bringing up Capture the Flag makes me reminisce. Um, in the world, the modern world of um, Battle Royale's there's not really any objective-based shooters anymore. Like, yeah. Rainbow Six has objectives, but most of the time it comes in to wipe the team. That's typically what happens. But like mm -hmm. old-school objectives yeah. like Capture the Flag, you could murder the other team and lose because you forgot yeah, the main point. Yeah. Capture the fucking flag. Capture the flag. Yeah. Capture it. So I, like, played, I miss that stuff. Man, I haven't played a Capture the Flag well, I, I take that back. We we played it in Halo not that long ago. But before that, I mean, that's a, a pretty abandoned game mode these days. Yes, it is. Yeah. Like, like, what is the most modern game you can think of that has Capture the Flag? I guess Quake 2. Do Call of Duties? I mean, Halo still does. Yeah, Halo, yeah. but Halo 5, th when you call that modern, that was seven years ago. Almost. Oh, no, oh not I'm referring to uh, just Master Chief Collection. Well, you like, can't call like, that modern. <laughs> <laughs> like, the most... I think Call of Duty might have a flag mode. They have some objective-based stuff, but it's normally optional objectives. 
or when the killing really still wins you the objective kind of stuff. Granted, killing typically does win you capture the flag. Mm-hmm. But you can be a rat bastard, go around all the combat and snake the flag. And those are some of the funner ones. That was like one of my formative memories with Unreal Tournament way, way back in the day. Because like I just got off like a two week bend of playing nothing but Splinter Cell on the fucking GameCube. <laughs> so I get into UT. I grab the flag because everybody's like rushing our base. They didn't keep anyone back. So I grab their flag and literally take like the path off to the very like ass end of the level that nobody goes there and nobody looks and just quietly like I'm peeking corners. I'm sneaking behind pieces of cover, just taking that flag. Oh fuck, <laughs> am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? And then I pop out of the back of our area and I'm about to slap the flag down and the guys that are trying to steal our flag see me and I, I get exploded. Oh, so close. Everywhere. It sucks. <laughs> But I loved it. It was the feeling, the so feeling of being that guy, the, the sneaky guy that that gets you yeah. know one up on the whole other team. That's always that's always a good feeling. I and did it's, that. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it's fun just to position because, like in um, Tarkov, Rob hates rats. He hates the rat player. Meanwhile, like I like and enjoy the rat. So it's like fun in those type of games because people despise people that have that kind of play style. The sneaky pop one shot off, and that's all you do. He's one, and of, I, one of those guys. Play the I game. Love it. Exactly. <laughs> I, I love I that love there it. are multiple viable play styles in games, though. I think that's a that's something that should be celebrated. And and I think as, as long as that that sort of play style rivalry isn't taken too seriously, I think that can be fun. But mm. it's it's good to keep in mind that hey, you know, it's okay to play a game differently. And you know and embrace that aspect of it instead of like chastising people for real yeah well and it it can give you a nice change of pace when you're playing a game like i actually have a thing i do on tarkov that i think you guys initially laughed at because like i'd say um super low key like i get some keys i run in pop some cash registers and maybe kill a scav or two like i go in knowing like this is not going to be a high action run but mm. i can just be really chill i'm not losing anything i can relax it's not the normal high intensity way of playing, which mm-hmm. is nice. Yeah, I, uh, I actually did that in Pavlov last night. Um, oh. I was sneaking up, like all my team went one direction. I decided to go like into mid and wrap around behind people, and so it was the whole rest of the team, all of their team, like actively firing at each other, and me just the sneaky bastard in the back. I, I ran up to people and I was just like. I just got to sneak. And they're like, they're all looking forward. I'm looking at their back. They're all concentrating on like throwing grenades and they see this entire battalion in front of them. And I'm just like, stab. Okay. Okay. I got him. Now I got to I got him. There's the stab. Okay, oh, fuck. They found me. And then I got shot. But it was great. I love those feelings. And in VR, it's somehow so much better. Like knifing people in Counter-Strike is possibly the greatest feeling you will ever get in your entire life. But in Pavlov, it's so much better because there's proximity voice chat. So oh, no. <laughs> you get to hear the aftermath. And, and like they turn around and as he's turning, he just gets a knife in the neck and you're like, yes, I did it. I am super violent. Wow. I have concerns. And then you go and <laughs> it was fantastic. I've never gotten a knife kill in CS. Well, outside oh, of gun yeah. game, outside of gun game. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the best feeling in the world, uh, especially when somebody is opping and like they're they're fucking sighted in. They're picking off people one by one, and you just like you walk right past their scope, and you're like, "Hey, can you can you not?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got him. <laughs> yes, that was three swings because two misses, and then yeah. finally you connect. Please, please, <laughs> oh, just stop. <laughs> ah, shit. Awesome. Um, so Adam, I see yeah. a game on this list that I well, there's two games I don't know. We'll get to the one later. What is Ghost Runner? Oh, Ghost Runner. Yeah, it's a, a recently released game. I just played the demo, which. By the way, a brand new game with a demo. Fantastic. I'd love to see it. Awesome. Um, uh, Ghost Runner is Cyberpunk Mirror's Edge with Ninja Combat. 
I'm listening. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll preface this by saying that I I liked it, but I didn't love it enough to buy it immediately. But but there's something there. Um, it's a very it's a first person, quick paced uh, parkour, uh, a lot of wall running and jumping, and uh, you know fighting enemies with your sword. Um, it kind of plays out in the pacing of something like Hotline Miami because it is very challenging and it's one hit, one kill, both directions. Every enemy is a one hit, one kill, and if they get one hit on you, you're dead and, and you have to try again. But it's very fast paced in the sense that you die, you immediately respawn like really not very far from where you died and you can and do it again. Like even in just the the demo I played, which is more or less the tutorial section, um, I died a lot. I died a lot of times because it, it it took a while to get used to the movement and stuff and the combat and and everything. Um, so it's definitely one of those games where you gotta you gotta get good, and it's gonna be frustrating, but um, it's also pretty cool. Um, visually ah. stunning. The cyberpunk futuristic thing is super cool. Uh, running around super quick, sliding down um, down inclines and running on walls, jumping from wall to wall. You have a dash mechanic like you would expect in something like this. Um, and you can slow down time for, for a small amount of time in combat. So you can actually hold your dash button, time will slow down, and you can like move left to right a little bit. And then when you let go, you dash forward. So it's a great way to dodge enemy bullets and stuff. Um, so the the parts of the game that I didn't like is it it did kind of feel frustrating at times. Um, and I did read some reviews where people were complaining that occasionally the, the controls weren't as smooth as they should be. I thought it felt slightly clunky, um, partially because just I hadn't played enough to get good at the the movement and the combat and stuff but um it did feel a little a little stiff i felt i felt myself missing missing things more than i i think i should um and also the fact that it's a first person game where you're getting shot at by multiple enemies from different areas led to me getting mm. shot uh you know by an enemy i didn't see or you know didn't know the bullet was heading my direction so that that can happen sometimes too but uh overall when you died do they give you a good sense of where that came from, though? Uh, no, no. You just die and restart. All right. But like I said, it's super quick. So you die, restart. You know, try that little short section again. Die, restart. Try that little short section again. Oh, what if I could do it this way? You know, it's a lot of just timing things properly and navigating a, a good path through. Um, but yeah, visually and the music, it's got that like '80s sort of synth wave thing going on. It's it's really cool in presentation. Um, as a whole game, I don't know how you know it, it shakes out if it holds up throughout the whole game to a cool experience. But the little bit of the demo I played was pretty cool. I would definitely recommend at least play the demo, and if you like it, you know consider consider playing the whole thing. I don't think I'll buy it. Yeah. It's like twenty bucks, I think. Um, I don't think I'll buy it, but I was close to close to buying it. If I run out of games to play, you know, I might I might come back to this one because conceptually I love it. The, the theme is awesome. I loved Mirror's Edge, and and the, the small amount of similarities between this and Mirror's Edge were really cool. Yeah, this really has me intrigued from your description, because yeah. like you said, I think all of us agree Mirror's Edge was a fucking fantastic game. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and actually, we, the way you were explaining that dash mechanic kind of makes me think super hot a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. In the sort of get that slow feeling. down dodge. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love super hot. So like I... You, you've you sold me you sold yeah. me enough to try out this at demo least for at sure. least play the demo yeah see see how it goes uh clunky controls i i can understand could probably suck in a game like that yeah but yeah. since since it's paired with the idea of quick restart and not block, much loss of progress mm -hmm. you could probably look past that i would assume that being said i don't know how much of it is the controls truly being clunky and how much of it was just me not playing enough to like be super comfortable with everything you know, you think a game like that, you would think that you pretty much have the movement down immediately, and then it's just like working on your timing and reaction and stuff. Um, but I don't, I, I really just, I don't know. I can't tell. I haven't played it enough to really decide. But my, 
but my first impressions were moving around is super fun but once you start getting into the combat and you have to to dodge bullets and make sure your dashes don't dash into bullets and sometimes the enemies have very very high accuracy um it can be a little frustrating too but yeah check it out try it out and if you love it and then yeah consider playing the whole thing free demo free demo i i so wish more games would have free demos because i love checking stuff out yeah and i know tom's called this out and i've done it before it's not what it's there for. I'm not telling you to do it. But Steam <laughs> safeguards you if you buy a game and it's dog shit. Yeah. 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 That, that's an option I always forget about. But at the same time, I don't really want to do that. It's not what it's there for. It really yeah. isn't. Yeah. But it is there and it can be used like and, that. And it's but it's nice, not how it's designed. It's nice to know that that's there, though. Like, if, you, if I were yeah. to decide, you know what? Maybe I will buy this game and then play it a little longer. And, you know, as long as I don't go over that whatever time window it is for refunds you know i do have yeah. that option of just being like no you know now that i played a little more i don't think it's for me yeah and I, I think that's totally fine now i have played games where the game is over after like an hour and a half like let's say some tiny like indie thing mm -hmm. and the game is over well within that refund window timeline even if i didn't love the game if the game was short I feel a moral imperative not to refund. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, if it's like a big game, like like Rainbow Six Siege, for instance, right? When I first played it, I fucking hated it. I played an hour, and I said, "Not for me." So I got my money back, and I think that's totally valid. Mm -hmm. Um, didn't Steam? I'm gonna say recently, but I think it was something like eight months ago. Do something to address shorter games with the refund policy. Like, didn't they actually start doing some kind of a mission process where certain games? Didn't. It sounds familiar, but I can't remember anything specifically. Sure. What is the what is the normal what the two hour hours. limit? Two hours. Two hours, and then they'll make exceptions for games that are trash fires or bad dev policy kind of bullshit. Mm. It yeah. doesn't happen yeah. often, but they have made exceptions. That can be tough. Like no Man's Sky, they did. That can like be a tough. Uh, game. Certain games that could be a tough time frame, even two hours. Like mm -hmm. games with super long intro cutscenes. Uh, you know, if Metal Gear Solid Four <laughs> was on Steam, like two hours you in, you you're right just there. now starting to get a feel for the gameplay. Yeah, and I, the good thing is, like I said, they have like No Man's Sky. I loved the game, but it pissed a ton of people off, and they were great. Like people had 10, 12 hours into the game, and Steam was still allowing refunds just because of the bait and switch aspect of it. Speaking of No Man's Sky, so, I mean, did you see the uh, update? That they're working on? Yes. They're doing a yes. big, huge graphical overhaul, aren't they? Well, yes. And the biggest thing for me is they're really ramping up on base building. So once they introduced base building, we did a lot of that. Like we made a 72 PC base. There's like four or five of us. And we built it so big, the game started to crash. Like the game yeah. was having issues with our base. What they showed in this trailer, and for the record, they have done bait and switch before, but I think they've learned their lesson not to. <laughs> um, what they showed in that trailer was a fucking gigantic base that was on the scale of a city. So granted, they have dev tools to get that shit done, but as long as the game can stably support that, dude, that might be a new time sink for me because that looked awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I really need to get back in and see if they fix their VR bugs because it became nigh unplayable, especially landing anywhere with any kind of user created content it would instantly tank my frames like 20 uh, fps and i would literally have to close my eyes to avoid getting motion sickness <laughs> i didn't enjoy that game much in vr mainly because to me all cockpit vr works all f first person vr works combination it's kind of weird because you're out moving around versus you're sitting yeah. in a cockpit it definitely doesn't That's control great yeah. And it wasn't developed no. with VR, you know, initially, wasn't it? It was basically. Yeah. yeah. It was added in. on. Yeah. And I want to call out their VR adaptation was great. The tanking issue Tom's talking about wasn't just a solely VR thing. The, that's kind of what I was referring to, where the game would start to break with user content. Mm -hmm. And the game as a whole tanks, which is noticeable on flat screen. It's sickening in VR. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like how I usually joke about like 59 frames per second is sickening to a PC gamer. Um, it is literally physically sickening to a, a <laughs> VR player. That's fair. Uh, 
So um, so but it's you're... Halloween, guys. Can we can we talk uh, horror again for a little bit? I know we yes. did this the past couple of weeks because I keep bringing it up because I keep watching movies and stuff. <laughs> can we can we talk a little bit of horror? Let's get I it. I guess. Um, uh, small aside, I watched another horror movie today, Hellraiser, the original from the eighties. Oh 80s. yeah. Uh, I didn't care for it honestly. <laughs> it was the, all the, all the was time. bad. It was just I don't know. Man, those were of an era. It's like that uh, Puppet Master. Mm-hmm. Um, those are all I kind of bunch into the same. And like I kind of put Candyman in the end of that era. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, the concept of Hellraiser could be really cool. Like the idea of interdimensional demon things that are, <laughs> you know, capture souls and make them suffer is very very scary. But um, now, now you know it. Between the aging and the acting, it was just I didn't really enjoy it. I'm glad I watched it. It's a cult classic. Like I'm, I'm glad I at least checked it out and gave it a fair shot. But it was not for me. Um, I also those, watched. Go ahead. I was gonna say those kind of brought in the era of like a slasher horror, and that is probably my least favorite genre of horror. I don't like slasher movies. I think those are really, eh. It's not for you. No. Like, yeah. That's, those aren't my my cup of tea either, really. But I can see the I literally I literally grew up watching those as a kid. Like oh, my mom yeah, would I used watch to really like and them. laugh at them. <laughs> there, that's the I don't know if this is the right comparison, but it's the horror movie equivalent of a popcorn movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's absolutely it's just fun and you know, I guess kind of spooky. Um, I, I remember also, the original media coverage of Scream. And it was supposed to be like this huge horror movie that scared the shit out of everyone. Mm-hmm. Looking back, God, that is such a campy, corny movie. I'm wondering if it was supposed to be satirical. I never thought of it that way. Maybe I mean, it's I heavy-handed. I, I don't know that I've actually ever seen Scream. If I really? did, it was when I was younger and once, and I don't remember it, but... Could be. But anyway, you had another one? Horror. Yeah, I watched a it's not really a horror movie, but Ten uh Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yes. Yes. Fantastic movie. Uh seeing John Goodman in such a dark, serious role was fantastic. He pulled it off. Um and I love just the the guts the movie had to go in the direction that it did. Yes. Um, I hate and- spoiling things, but in the particular way that it did in the time of the movie in which it did uh, takes a lot. And I know that it kind of, you know, there's some lore stuff with connection to the to other movies that where maybe people that knew that going in, maybe it would see that coming. Um, but just as a standalone movie to go in that direction, I think was uh, pretty gutsy. And I, I appreciate it for that. There was some lore, but the way it connected, no one expected it quite as much. Yeah, yeah. Because there there was a lot of space in there. I want more movies in that universe because there is a gap of what the fuck happens. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like monstrous gap. Like they alluded to it a little bit at the end of one of them. Mm-hmm. But this one, and also we talked about this one a little bit ago because it's one of those movies that it's it's a uh, movie type a for 97 percent of the movie but the last three percent of the movie makes it movie type b now <laughs> yeah but yeah it's, it's one of those movies that i it's it is so suspenseful it, it's just i i love that that style it, it was just really good have um, you ever seen split no but i need to and i've i've heard I've heard it's amazing, and I've heard from multiple people that I need to watch that. If you enjoy Cloverfield Lane, you will love Split. Oh, I shouldn't say it like that, but you'll enjoy it. Okay. There's a high likelihood you'll enjoy that. Oh, and that's the one that's a sequel to Unbreakable. And what's the third movie? Uh, That's it. Hasn't came out yet, has it? I heard it. I thought it did. Yeah. Was it? Oh, okay. Is it Man of Man of Glass? Glass Man. I think it's just glass. Glass, just glass. Yeah. Um, Just glass. I heard that one was just glass. Too. The movie, just glass. I, I, I heard that. I heard that it yet. was really good. But um, you it might have. I, I like you might have. You might have had something a little spoiled on you, because where Cloverfield Lane 
the naming let you know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Split, like if you went into it oh, only watching cinematics, okay, like you had no clue. They didn't. It's market another it. one of those. They didn't market it as a sequel. Okay, no, it's Fair another enough. one of those with the last three percent of the movie. Oh, okay. makes it something else. Sorry, yeah. everybody listening, in case you're spoiled too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Okay. That's I think it's common it's knowledge. Now. Yeah. It's okay. It happened to me too because I literally had this conversation with Irk like six months ago about splits and glass and all those. I'm like, oh yeah, it's I wanted to see the next one. He's like, what next one, Tom? I'm like, well, you know, they made the sequel. He's like, yeah, you're not supposed to know that until you've seen it. I was like, oh. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. Yeah, it right. absolutely but, wasn't marketed as. But to encounter yeah. that kind of reveal. Uh, blind is incredible like uh um, yes like play like seeing pt for the first time what is this cool yeah. new playable teaser oh this is such a amazing horror game and at the end all of a sudden what it's gonna be a silent hill game hello yeah and then it, and then it all crashes and burns and none of it ever happens and everybody gets sad but moving on adam you just yeah, blew my I mind feel what fucking robbed does pt stand for playable teaser yes no, peaceful trees. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's peaceful okay. dog. When you load up PT, it's got like pictures of woods. It's peaceful trees. That's the name of the game. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> uh, speaking of the horror thing, I played a, an old classic horror game today. At least classic oh, in my wow. mind because it was one of the first horror games I played. Um, or really? really got into not played okay first one of the first horror games i really got into uh dead space the original dead space i installed it i was like all right does this game hold up i'll reinstall it i'll play through a little bit um yeah i couldn't really play through it a little bit because the physics were weird uh the controls were weird my like movement would would like slow down drastically and then speed back up uh, things were floating around oh. the atmosphere, which would make sense if it was in one of those zero gravity rooms where things float around. But this was in the regular part where you're first getting into the ship. And it just started to get interesting where we first encounter the things and a door opens up and I can't walk through the door. I get stuck. So I'm it was like, a bad port. I don't know if it's like, hey, this game doesn't work very well on Windows 10 anymore. I don't know if it's just my install is messed up or something on my PC I, is messed up. I can I can almost certainly tell you exactly what's happening. Okay. What's uh, what frames does your monitor run at? It's over oh, sixty, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Yep. Okay. They used. I'll give it another uh, shot then. Physics instead of delta-based physics, so. If you run at anything more than 60 FPS, shit gets weird. There's actually a reason why. Then why uh, is there a setting in the graphics settings to run the game at 144 hertz or frames per second? <laughs> like because the, the, they would <laughs> they would get they would get killed if they didn't. Honestly, even if the game doesn't support it properly, if you bot or you threshold a PC game, PC gamers get pissed if you tell them you can't run your rig as hot as you want so, so they say no run it as hot as you want it's not gonna work like literally if you that run is so backwards like ocarina enough time if you run it at greater than 24 frames per second hashtag n64 lifestyle uh if you run it at greater than 24 frames per second the third dungeon in the game is literally physically unable to be completed um <sighs> when it comes <sighs> When it comes to like 360 era, is 60 frames the breaking point or is it 30 frames? It might be 30. Probably. So 30. if you I, go I, back, I, Adam, be aware of that. Okay. Yeah. So I need to retry that. That's that's frustrating because I was really looking forward to, to you know, playing through at least some of that game again because I have a lot of uh, good memories of Dead Space and the sound design in that game is fantastic. Yeah. Great is. ending. Great ending. I love the end of that first game fucking hated it it was the worst fucking ending of all goddamn time didn't make you piss I your pants and that's why you said it actually no. don't think i ended up beating that game i like I enjoyed dead, that space, ending. dead space had a lot of like promises and lead up and 
then they did this i'm gonna avoid specific spoilers but they did this pull the rug out from under you oh it's not the thing we were teasing the whole time it's this other thing which is significantly more boring than the other thing we were teasing it as and i was just oh. like oh like like you expect oh shit the house is haunted like stuff is happening i hear footsteps and scattering and like everywhere and something's in the walls man it turns out that nah dog it's a field mouse it got stuck in your walls in your crawl space so we just took it out like that's what, what i meant fucking dead space did what i meant by ending it wasn't necessarily the entire plot at the end literally what that plot meant in the last 60 seconds yeah i i loved that i loved that fucking thing and then like it was it was clear that the whole buildup, the reason they couldn't stick to their original ending is because they wanted an excuse. To, they wanted, like, a cliffhanger so they could put more fucking sequels in the pipeline. <laughs> and if they did the original plan, it doesn't fit in as nicely than if they pulled the rug out. And they're like, oh, no, it was a field mouse the whole time. By the way, there's field mice everywhere. And you're like, dude, please. This was going to be something great. And then you just shit it out. So you could take another dump on me in a year and make me buy another $60 game. Which, by the way, Dead Space 2, dog shit. Dead Space 3, gave up. Never played it. <laughs> that was my Fair concern enough. with Horizon Zero Dawn. They kind of... They didn't shoehorn it that hard. Mm. But the actual ending was like, oh, come on. Mm. Especially like, for a I game get, that was great going into it. I get developers want to have like a direct continuity, but there is such a thing. Like the thing we like about games is generally the gameplay and how it works. So if you don't have a complete narrative continuation from the first, the first one, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Make it a mechanical sequel. Say, Hey, look, here's another game that plays like dead space has the same atmosphere as dead space, but totally new story with a totally new person in a totally new place. Or cool. explore the universe. I'm yeah, like, I'm not attached to fucking Isaac the Engineer. I'm attached to the cool cutting gunplay and the zero grav sections and the non-diegetic interfaces. Like, I really got attached to those portions of Dead Space. I don't necessarily give a shit about some random dude named Isaac in a, like, shitty off-brand Iron Man costume. <laughs> well, the Walking <laughs> Dead... Zero uh, personality anyway. Literally yeah. no personality. Um, to me, take uh, Telltale Walking Dead. Perfect example. They took a universe people loved and yeah. that were really intrigued by, and they did their own thing inside that universe. Mm. Yeah. I think that's a great thing that developers need to start exploring is not always having continuity with your original story. Just stay in that space. Stay in that universe. Explore it more. Build it more. So uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Uh, you know who's been doing that right the entire time? Zelda. There are hardly, 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 hardly any direct sequels because everything is a brand new fucking game. I would agree with you, except for the retcon attempt to make it all a continuous narrative. Yeah, yeah. Like so that is the most complicated yeah. bullshit ever. Yeah, I agree. I really wish Nintendo would have just said there is no continuity, but then they couldn't do things like you know, key off your your emotions. Like, hey, you love the world from Ocarina of Time. Well, guess what? It's destroyed now in Wind Waker and you have to get it back. Like, they did that so they could add, like, some emotional hooks, but it just ended up complicating everything. It was really short-sighted. I still feel like some of that was an afterthought rather than a game to, or a design oh, decision. absolutely. Absolutely. And Nintendo has even gone back. Like, I have a version of the Hyrule Historia where they fucked up the timeline. Because somebody said, oh, wait, this part doesn't make sense. If this thing happened, then this thing would have to happen here, which doesn't fit what you put on the page. And so Nintendo actually had to retcon their official uh, Zelda timeline to add in the stuff and, like, the other weird stuff that people are saying this is where it messed up. It's If Nintendo can't figure this shit out, what hope does anyone else have? And for a little bit of clarity for people... Correct me if I'm wrong here, Tom, but I'm going to kind of explain it high level. Zelda started as a single timeline, and I believe Ocarina of Time, it then forked into three different timelines yeah. where there's been three series of games going that are sequels without being sequels. And then from there, they eventually come back together. I believe is that Breath of the Wild is actually now a joint timeline where they all three come back together. And this timeline was decided after it actually was made. 
So that's where it was more of a retcon job by Nintendo to make it a narrative rather than a conscious decision mm. to create a narrative. Sounds yeah. messy. And, like as a fuck. I I would like really blame Nintendo, but frankly, the only reason anybody cares so much is because Marvel went and did this properly. And actually, they didn't do it 100% properly either. If you saw the third Thor movie, um, they actually had stuff that in the first Thor movie that negates all the Infinity War bullshit. But Hela calls out fake on the Infinity Gauntlet to kind of retcon the thing that they originally fucked up. Um, so it's not that like even Marvel's perfect at it. They're just really good at sleight of hand so you don't remember. Fair yeah, and let's be honest, like there's a lot of us who didn't watch some of the other Avenger character movies and then we watched the Avengers. So we wouldn't have known hey, that the original me. Exactly. We wouldn't have known like the original Thor movie fucked something up because we just watched the yeah. Avengers and maybe the Iron Mans, because the Iron Mans were pretty fucking good. Yeah. If you haven't seen Ant Man though, Ant Man's legit. It is funny. <laughs> I need to. I like him. I like him a lot. Yeah, if if you like Paul Rudd at all, like Ant Man and the sequel are great. I think the first one's still better. Um, and you're gonna meet my favorite character in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh. Luis. How he recaps the story. I really I would watch a two hour movie where Luis was literally just sitting in a chair telling you the story of the entire like Avengers saga instead of watching the movies. I think it would be even better. Yeah. For sure. But so, um, I played some Phasmo yeah. last night. Hey, me too. How you been liking? You've been playing a lot more of that than I have recently. Yeah. Um, I, I am loving Phasmo. It looks like the devs did. Um, we just got an update. In their, in their latest update, they fixed a bunch of bugs, which is kind of nice. Uh, there's still a bunch more to fix. Like, uh, there's a bug right now where if I face plant, the ghost can't kill me most of the time. So literally, for a couple of hunts, I would cheese it. I would stand in the middle of the room and uh, face plant myself. And the ghost would literally be like walking above me in circles, making it noises. <laughs> and it can't get me. I stopped doing that because it does remove you know, some of the challenge. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So replace, replace the challenge because we've gotten pretty good at it. We've been doing, Chewie and I have been doing self-imposed challenges. Uh, so one the game actually has built into some of the daily challenges, which is starting items only. Let me tell you, not having a crucifix in the room makes everything scarier because you have yeah. no insurance whatsoever. You yeah. have one fucking flashlight. So it's me with a flashlight or Chewy with a flashlight. And then one of us is like, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I can't see anything. It's dark in here. Mm -hmm. And it is so fucking good. We have to try that tonight. Because starting items only just makes the game feel fresh again. The so, other thing we did is uh, no flashlights as a rule, which is awful. So you have candles that are constantly going out. Yeah. And you can use candles, but it's not it's not easy. That's tough so because you have to hold the lighter too, and then you only have one other tool at your disposal. Yeah. yeah. So it's important when you're doing um, only starting tools or no flashlights at all? to know where the light switches are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Imperative that you know that because Adam and I did a few of those and thankfully Adam was really good about light switch placement. So he would be able to run in and just bam, 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 hit the lights. And then you just have to know where's the, the breaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some other things in the update, I don't remember all the stuff. I'd have to look at it again, but um, they added a new ghost model. Mm -hmm. It's like a woman it's in creepy. a business sort of outfit with hair you know, down in front of the face. Um, and the spirit box animation. now. Yeah. Oh, wait, the new what? New ghost animations, which uh, I think you saw one of those last night before you were uh, ultimately killed. Um, oh. Yeah. So, uh, oops, I broke Discord because Eric sent me a message. Damn it, Eric. Oh, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this isn't brand new. This has happened before. Um, okay. But yeah, the, the ghost crawling around on the ground at you is definitely the scariest of all the, the ghosts, for sure. We had um, we had one at the farmhouse yesterday. It was the 
the kid with the teeth for face model, which is yeah. one of the creepier ones, and it was a crawler. And it was Ooh. I'm on <laughs> I'm on the top floor, right? And I'm in that like far room and it is on the opposite side of the the top hallway. And the hunt starts, oh. and I see it crawling out of the ghost room. And it's not just visible the whole time. Of course, it's one of those that blinks in and out of view, crawling on the ground at me. Like, that was that was a good one. That was, uh, I, I love that. So, yeah, as long as they don't start crawling on the walls and ceilings, um, I can definitely handle those. Oh my God. But if they start crawling on the walls and ceilings, man, that's going to actually start to spook me again. That would be great. Um, would be I remember great. my I hope first... They do it. My- my first crawler like was that out of a movie that I've seen uh, because I was watching a can or a camera for orbs. A hunt started. I seen everyone run out of the room and then I seen the crawler chase after them <laughs> outside the door it was such a full a fucking cool moment. Mm-hmm. That is great. Um, also, the spirit box will once you get a response from the spirit box, it actually shows the response on the display, which is kind of cool. Oh, nice. Small little quality of life thing. I know they fixed some other stuff, but I can't remember what all what all was in there. But um, either way, I'm glad just, to see the game getting updated, and I hope to see more awesome updates in the future. Chewie just posted something in the Discord where the devs might be teasing a new ghost type. Ooh, oh, that so could be we'll fun. see. I wonder what it would be. Yeah. I'm not too uh, knowledgeable about uh, the various ghost types. You ghost types. You're not up on your ghost science? No, not really. Wait, you didn't take that elective? Come on. No, no. Sorry. Ghost 101, dog. All right, so oh. yeah, uh, games this week. I played some Phasmophobia 2, played some EFT, played some Rocket League, and that's about it for me. So I kind of hit on I was doing mobile stuff. Yeah, I want to touch you, about. I want to hear about your horrors. This is the scariest thing we've talked about so far. What, <laughs> what is this, this nightmare I'm, rectangle I'm, you've been playing games on? So there's this thing that some of us carry around in our pockets. Yeah, it's it's called a phone. But I think around <laughs> two thousand. Is that a around or a Star Crunch? Is that a, that's a Star Crunch. <laughs> it's, it's a Star Crunch. You <laughs> got Star Crunches. You carry those in your pocket. You always gotta yeah. have. A, yeah, you gotta you have not? your Star Crunch, dude. And then you gotta have a backup Star Crunch. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Like you put a Star Crunch, and your homie's like, "Damn, that sounds good." You're I like, just, I got you, bro. I love that you just had those ready too. <laughs> yeah. The fun thing is, like, they're probably it was, not it was believable. They, it was desk. probably in his back yeah. pocket. And he's just like, "Oh yeah, my Star Crunch. Of course, I'll carry it. I don't leave the house without it." Dude, that that's one of the best tears of uh, Little Debbie's. <laughs> oh no, Sam. it's not. It's, it's one of the there, best. It's not one of the best. I'm gonna say Swiss cake roll, oatmeal cream pie. Those are the S tiers. Oh, Oatmeal cream pie, Star Fudge Crunch. Rounds. Fudge rounds, dude. Fudge rounds are all right. Fudge but they're rounds okay. Right. Too much chocolate. Yeah. But um, so Come these things, the yeah. No, they're, they're they're okay. All little Debbies are okay, but yeah. So cell phone around 2007, they stopped being cell phones. Let's be honest. Um, so I started playing games recently on my phone. It's a new phone. Well, newish. It's the S9, new for me. Um, so I was playing. What was I doing? Uh, there's a game I've always had on my phone that I would just play stupidly in passing, but it had an ad come up for this game called Archer Realm, and it had one of those ads where it shows like you're making uh, walls to funnel units, and then you're shooting them with your person. I'm like, oh, it's kind of like a tower defense. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I get into it. That is not the game at all. It was absolutely one of the bait and switch ads, like we talked about. Mm. And it's just like the Homescapes where the core game is actually really good. Why are you hiding the core game? Ah. So what this is, it's a uh, roguelite where you have an archer and you have a joystick on the screen. You're moving him around. When you're not moving, he's shooting. So he'll shoot the nearest enemy from when you stop and he'll stay locked on that unit till he dies. You remove and he locks onto the newest closest target, but he can never shoot when moving. So the idea is like after every time you level in a run, you get randomly three different abilities you get to choose from. Like you can shoot faster, you can shoot two arrows, you can shoot th- diagonal arrows, sideway arrows, flame, different enhancements. You can get vampirism. You can even have it to where it like um, ricochets. So if you hit an enemy, it hits another. So like there's all these different power-ups. 
And then, you know, you finally get to a boss and you end the run, whatever. Um, you get items every occasionally on drops that you harvest, and then you can equip them to your character in the metagame. And you can fuse multiple items together, make them stronger and different abilities. And it's actually a really decent roguelite hmm. on a phone. And it is a game that has like, hey, you have 20 energy, it's five energy a run. So you get four runs, probably take you about 40 minutes, and then probably take about two hours to get it charged back up. But they give you ample stuff. Like four times a day, you can watch a single ad and get five energy. Or they do a lot of that where you could pay for this or we'll give you another tier of it where you just watch an ad and we'll give it to you. And I'm all for it. It's their way of, we're getting some money from you because you're watching the ad, but we're not taking direct money from you. But it's not needed. And it's re it's a really fun little change of pace for me. I like roguelikes. I haven't really touched uh, one heavily in a while. I've probably put 10 to 15 hours on this game. <laughs> wow. It's a fucking bone game, dude. That's why we put 10 to 15 hours on it. You could have beaten Resident Evil 7 or something. <laughs> nope. I had my phone up playing a little roguelike. Which, which, by the way, Resident Evil 7 is a fantastic horror game, and it is on the Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass. Ooh. BTW. I have to look into that. At least play I'm the first half. About, I'm still mad about the PSVR exclusivity. Just play but, it, Tom. Just play the I, flats. I want to play it in VR. <laughs> What am I have all these rubber underpants? What am I doing with them? Sleeping. Asmo's not scary enough to use them. But um, this game's fun. You, if Adam, you might actually enjoy it just to give it a little glance. Um, and then during this, one of the ads I watched was for another game. Um, and I'm a sucker. Wait, did you fall I'm... into the mobile game ad cycle? Oh no! Did you? How I'm... many, how oh, many no. games are in this chain, Eric? <laughs> how many? Three. Oh. So, so I, there was an ad for Eric. a game, and it, it was a playable ad. And I will tell you right now, if you're going to do an ad on a mobile game, if you make it playable, I believe your odds of download are going to be so much higher. So it was a tower defense game where you're randomly rolling dice of different colors, and you can combine numbers of the same. So you put ones together, mm -hmm. and it makes it two, and that two stronger. And things are going around the grid and you're powering up your towers. And I did a little bit of that. It's it's okay. I maybe put like 30 minutes to an hour. But what I'm a sucker for is games where you watch numbers grow. Like just watching numbers grow. And one of the ads was for this idle miner game where you make a mine shaft. You give it a manager. He makes the people mine automatically. You upgrade shit and it just keeps harvesting money over and over. And you're doing nothing. You're not really playing a fucking game. You're just saying, open a new shaft, upgrade, we're done. But man, I'm a sucker for that shit. S says the guy who always talks bad about walking simulators. Oh, I'm, I, I, <laughs> it's not a game. I am literally, give me a calculator and I'll just keep hitting equals okay. after a multiplication to watch the numbers right. grow. That's effectively what this game is. I have a question for you, Eric. Yes. How many of these games did you sink money into this week? Just one. I bought a battle pass for the for the um the roguelike. Okay. And it was only for a battle pass, so it's okay. not like I'm buying other stuff. I'm just making and, sure we didn't lose you entirely. No. And here here's a pro tip: if you do occasionally enjoy mobile games, and you have an Android device, you might actually be able to do it on Apple. I don't know. Tom might be able to call in on this, but Google Rewards, they will do GPS based surveys to you based on where you've been. And they will give you free Google Play money. Super I mean, nice. As soon as I said Google Play money, I know it's out of Apple, so ignore that. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. you get Google it, Play money. Cool. Uh, but it gives you it gives, you it gives you free Google Play money. It's really I, nice. I will give you free seventy-two pin money. Just uh, just send me a message. Okay. Uh, Tom, send money, please. There we go. Message sent. Anyway. Um, I owe you one star crunch. This just in, if you would like to support Eric's mobile game habit, you can subscribe on Twitch. <laughs> tier 2 and Tier 3, especially appreciated. So I can yep. buy all my mobile games. I was going to make fun of you, but... Uh-oh. Uh no. I, what? You too? I, what? I, I played you too? PUBG, I played PUBG Mobile, and it, it wasn't bad. 
Yes, he's on. Yeah, but too. did you did, did you it. did you sink money into it though? No, hell no. Okay, okay. Yeah, no. There's no. I, I I can't give money to them because there are so many different types of currency. I don't know which one to buy. <laughs> <laughs> I played PUBG Mobile a long time ago when it first came out, and I was actually pleasantly surprised how well they made that work for a mobile game because when I thought mobile game. PUBG is the last game I would expect to even remotely yeah. work in that format, but they actually did a pretty good job with it. Yeah. Because it was poorly optimized as a regular game. You would think it yeah. would just tank yeah. a fucking phone. Yeah, no kidding. It works. The phone does get a little hot, but it works. Speaking of that, Tom, I know you mentioned a couple of casts ago that you had this weird urge to play PUBG again. I did actually install it on Steam in case you actually still wanted to play that sometime. So we can nice. play that sometime I if you want literally just updated it this morning so <laughs> um so speaking of PUBG, uh i played a new battle royale um so this just it looks like it just launched on steam they've been in testing for a very long time uh, it's called population one it is a vr battle royale with currently about 500 to a thousand concurrent vr players at any time uh which is pretty good that's not bad um so there's like 20 people per round each round takes like anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes it's a quick get in get out type of game it's not like you know PUBG where you can be sitting there for 40 minutes without a conclusion um it is really really quick um it feels like a weird combination of Fortnite and apex legends like the gunplay is straight up apex some of the movement feels very apex influenced but you can also gather resources and build yourself walls uh which is kind of interesting so oh. you can you can climb anywhere so you literally walk up to a wall you grab and you can just climb and then by t-posing your way to victory by outstretching your arms any ledge that you jump off of you can glide and your glide is way 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 faster than you're running so you're incentivized to always you know like run like like through a field okay there's a hay bale well i'm gonna jump on the hay bale and then glide and then get to the next one then jump on that then glide uh there's a lot of like moment to moment movement optimizations which is really cool um it doesn't do everything perfectly like i picked up a sniper rifle in any vr game ever you pick up a sniper <clears throat> rifle it has a scope on it and you look through the scope in this when you grab it with both hands your vision turns into a reticle like it literally blacks out everything around you and it's just the reticle. Like oh. even if like you grab it like this, you're now looking sideways and you've got to like fucking swing around to look <laughs> at places. It is that's the so, only so like, then legitimate place I have. So then it switches your view. D does it lock to your your positioning of the gun with your controllers yeah. or does it still lock to your head movement? No, positioning okay. of the gun. So that, that would be, be so awkward to me. That could be nauseating. It is very awkward. Luckily, it's just the op. Like the other sniper rifles don't seem to have this issue. Mm -hmm. um, the op is not fun to use. That said, I got a couple kills with it. I'm pretty decent with a long range, uh, long range weapon on that. Mm -hmm. um, the map feels like uh, it, it. It's a good balance. It's not super, super spread out. Like it's not like Myanmar and PUBG, but it's not exactly super compact like most of the tiny areas in Fortnite. it's a decent balance it it actually feels a lot like apex legends um but i really like the game we won like four rounds today i got a bunch of kills it was fantastic awesome. uh, and what's great is that because of the movement you have a lot of tactical options like okay do i sneak around the side of the house the other side of the house or do i be a real guy and go on top of the roof and then glide down behind the motherfucker with a shotgun and take his head off that way. It's always option what? three. Why not knock on the door and just go through? No. I mean, you can. Who Be polite. You're about to kill a dude. Be polite. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but uh, I, I love it. It's it's a little little pricey. It's 30 bucks. Um, I bought it. But honestly, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't pay 30 bucks for this. Um it's a VR game. It's got a bunch of people in it. It's a really, really well-made battle royale. It definitely the best made battle royale for any VR platform I've ever seen. Um, it works great. Um, it's not perfect. Like, I don't like the reloading. 
The reloading is you run out of bullets um, or you hit a button and a clip appears below your gun or a mag appears below your gun. So it's not like you're grabbing it from a belt, which is breaking my, yeah, breaking my Pavlov muscle memory. Um, so you, you put it in and then you grab the, the handle, which is also annoying because that's, that, that's not how guns work. If it's already primed, you don't reprime it after you put in a new mag, but they make you do it anyway. So whatever. If you um, went empty, you do. Yeah. Yes, if you went empty, you do. But even if you don't go empty, it still does that. So again, breaking a lot of my Pavlov muscle memory. But other than that, it's great. The in-game voice chat works perfectly. The party system is nice. It's got like its own embedded free battle pass thing. Like I didn't put any more money into it after I bought the game, but I, I'm unlocking stuff at a steady clip now. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I, I want to give this VR disclaimer for people. I am normally the guy that says, listen, games could be fatty. I'll wait. When it comes to VR, if a game has a player base and you're interested, you got to jump. Yeah. If you wait, the player yeah. base is gone and you'll never get a chance to actually experience that game. The only thing so where I've seen that isn't the case is like the biggest multiplayer games in, in VR. Pavlov, like Pavlov always Rec has 1,000 people. Rec Room always has 10,000 people. Pavlov always has at least 1,000. Yeah, those are probably the only exceptions. Everything else, if you are in, a, if you see a game that seems interesting in you and you know there's a player base there right now, if you have the income, do it because by the time you decide to do it, the player base might be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and reviving people requires you to rub uh, shock paddles together and walk over and zap. <laughs> That's and cool. if your two downed people are linking arms, then you can zap one of them to get them both up, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and Dave's calling out, they do the rec room kind of thing where you like uh, fist bump to party up. Yep. Nice. I um, love that. That's cool. So uh, actually, I take it back. I have one more complaint. And I, I really wish they would fix some of these things, but I it's an accessibility issue. I get that. Grenades are a, I select the grenade and then I literally get like an arc coming out of my hand and I click the trigger to throw oh, it. There's okay. no physical okay. throwing, which space. It disappoints me. I, I get it. They wanted to make it work for everything, but mm. ah, small ah. little immersion breaking thing. Yeah. Or it'd be um, nice to give you an option, but then that could also get physicality. But yeah, either way. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I had on my list to talk about today uh, was there's there is a VR massive um, custom server in Pavlov where you can have instead of your typical five on five Counter Strike matches, uh, you get twenty on twenty. It's nuts. It's just nuts. So you'll get into a match, you'll walk along this area to dust two, and then there's like forty fucking grenades coming over the wall, and everything is just exploding all at once. But um, I've talked about those before. That something new that's happened though is now the people standing up these servers are building maps specifically for those servers, like large scale, completely original content maps. Uh, and what's cool is that these aren't just like general purpose maps. They're built for this server. Like the people who are always playing there, right? Like um, I, I play with uh, a person called Massive and Handy Clapper and Deja Vu. Like these people have been there. Like I've literally been playing with them for a year or more at this point. Um, but they're, they're like consistent profile icons that they've always got are now like hidden in certain spots in the map. Like, hey, uh, where'd you see him? Oh, he's over by the handy clapper shed because there's a shed with his logo like on the bottom corner where you have to actually look for it. <laughs> but cool. if you know the map, if you know the people and you know what their icons look like, it can help with call outs, which is really cool. I've <laughs> never actually seen like since like Counter-Strike 1.6, I haven't seen server operators go out and build maps specifically for the communities. So it's it's That's pretty cool. rad. I'm enjoying it. That's awesome. I will say the idea of like 20v20 Pavlov is super entertaining to me. Like regular Pavlov, I, I don't dig CS. I'm sorry. I, I know a lot of people enjoy it. It's not, it's not my cup of tea. But when you get like a 20v20 shooter, you're starting to get my pace. I like the big grandiose shooters. Mm -hmm. and you know what's great about consistent servers is that like i i'm always playing on this vr massive server it's fantastic and the mods are usually there so there was this asshole last night 
who took a grenade, dropped it, and when we were all buying our guns, like literally most of the team just exploded into body parts everywhere. <laughs> uh, within 10 seconds, they were completely banned and yeeted from the match because there's a server with moderators. It's amazing. Um, and they get rid of the assholes. So we just were playing all fucking night having a great time. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to give a shout out to the VR Massive server and Pavlov. The, the server browser list is tiny. You'll find it. Just keep scrolling. Well, there's okay. another game that we had a really, really, really good time with that we should probably touch on before we move on. Oh, yeah. So um, after last cast, uh, it was a really quick cast. We decided we were doing Jackbox 7. Holy shit, that's a good Jackbox. Um, I feel that 3 was probably the pinnacle up until now. I think this might have passed 3 to me. Really? Me. That good? Nice. It, it's really good. Um, they have Quiplash 3, which Quiplash is a known quantity at this point. Mm -hmm. You fill in the blank with funny shit or just really good shit. Um, the best drawing game they've had. So they used to have TKO on 3, which was like a t-shirt designing contest. Here, they tell you to make a champion, like a wrestler or something, or a superhero of this specific thing. Like it may be champion of mowing the lawn. So you draw something that would represent that. So you could draw like a dad in cargo shorts and like socks and short or shoes or a giant or robot with lawn mowers for feet and arms. Ooh. Yes. And then <laughs> it gets, here's the fun part. So on the second part of the drawing round, instead of someone getting a prompt, they get your drawing and they have to draw someone to go up to battle against him for the champion of that thing. They oh. never see what that thing is. They only see what you drew. <laughs> That could be cool. So it gets that sounds it fun. gets really fun and really interesting. Um, then there was also um, so those those two right there carry the weights. Hands down, those two carry the weight. Just like TKO, Quiplash, and Trivia Murder carry the weight in three. Mm -hmm. Those two are awesome. Um there was a everyone works together to try to beat each other kind of game where you're this family and you're all doing chores. And it turns into this mass hysteria of everyone yelling for people to help them do this and that or another. It's really fun, but it's it's a little more um, nuanced. And like you have to be able to communicate with people. And what was the other one we played? I can't remember the fourth one offhand. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm I'm gonna look it up. This is live live podcast. My podcasting for you because uh, we can't podcast remember research. what the fourth one was. That's it fine. is a, the game that we, the stuff. Um, we did the thing. Blather round. Thing. round. Blather um, round. So explain that a little bit, Tom. No, because I just see the title. I'm looking for what it is. Yeah, I, I need to see <laughs> the image of it. Um. Oh, uh, oh, right, 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 right. Okay. You get a, a secret prompt. And you have a very small list of vocabulary words to play 20 questions with, with the rest of the, the people. So, like, if uh, if your prompt was tall, oh, yeah. you, you could put in, like, maybe you've got the word scruffy and asshole and fucking degenerate. Then you can use those words to describe Tom, but they can also describe Irk. Um, yeah. So then somebody would be like, Irk. And then you can use the pe the other people's submitted guesses as clues. So you could say similar to Earth or not at all like Earth. Um, and you can kind of lead people to get to the right answer. And you have to give enough clues that they get it quickly. And they have to guess in a way that doesn't give it away for other people who they're playing against. But they also need to get to the answer. Uh, it's yeah, really so cool. It's a really nice game. Whoever guesses it gets points, and the faster they guess it, the person giving the clues gets points. That 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 was the other really good one. It's only six people though, so we only played it a couple times. It's really good though. Yeah. All it in all, uh, I feel four was a really low point for Jackbox, and then they've been kind of digging their way back up since. Mm. So I, I feel this is a really high quality Jackbox it's if you're good. looking to pick up one. It's good to see yeah. after that many games that they've managed to step it back up to its to more or less its pinnacle yeah like they're, they're following um, the the resident evil arc once you yeah, get to seven much. things like, start to go uphill again 
Well, six wasn't awful. Like they had the robot raps, which is fun, but you need the right type of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they had Mr. Trivia Party 2, which I mean, it's going to be good because the first one was on three and it was one of the best things on three. Yeah. So I really yeah. want more. You don't know, Jack. That's that's what I'm waiting for. And then that's what I'm hoping is an eight. Well, they still make like full on. You don't know Jack's, don't they? I'm pretty sure they do. Those were just trivia games, right? Yeah. Which are fun unless, until you start getting Google fucked. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, that's the only uh, thing about, like, you don't know Jack to Trivia Murder Party. It's that, you know, most of the time you can Google an answer, which fucking sucks. Or um, Fibbage. Fibbage was mm, that way, too. Where we got yeah. Google fucked by on stream by somebody. <laughs> yeah, literally yeah, every time. take the fun out of it. Yeah, every time um, they were given a definition, they actually picked the right word. Yeah. That's just bullshit. <laughs> and Chewie, Chewie is saying, I forget which Jackbox pack it was, but there was one with a mini Among Us, which was pretty fun. Yeah, that was Push the Button. I want to say that was Jackbox 6. Hmm. I, th I, I, I think don't... that was Jackbox 6. I don't remember that one that well. It didn't really leave a mark on me. It, yeah. was, it was fine, but yeah, it's in Jackbox Party Pack 6. It's. Uh, I think the reason why it didn't take off is that generally Jackbox games are like quick hit party games, which are you can understand instantly. Uh, stuff like Werewolf, Secret Hitler, whatever, like that style of mafia s game, uh, takes a little bit of overhead to explain to somebody. Like once you know it, like once you've played Trouble in Terrorist Town slash Push the Button slash Among Us slash Secret Hitler, like once you've played one of them, you know the rules for the rest. But it doesn't really work if nobody's played it, right? Trying to explain yes. Mafia to somebody who hasn't played it before usually takes them a couple rounds to get up to speed. Mm -hmm. Jackbox's power is a lot of these games are so simple that you yeah. can have your mom sitting down and playing with you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, yeah. Parents know how to play Quiplash. It's fill in the blank with funnier, cool answers. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Really strong uh. in that regard. So is that uh, so, does that pretty much cover all the games we wanted to talk about that we've played this yes, week? Yes, it does. All I've right, so uh, Counter Strike because it's happy and nostalgic, and that's hey, it. Hey, nice, fitting background yeah. for you today. All right, so um, this next segment might get a little heated, but it yeah. can also be a whole lot of fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> at seventy two PC, if you've been listening to our other cast, you know that it's a video game podcast where we often don't talk about video games; we often talk about food. And since today is Halloween, uh, a very big staple of Halloween in general is candy. So we thought it would be fun to do a little tier list. Uh, we're going to do the Halloween candy tier list now because there are three of us. This can get a little more complicated. So basically. Uh, we'll, we'll all give our decisions on each candy as we go. Um, basically we're going by democracy rules. So majority, uh, if two people agree on where something should be placed, that's where it goes. Even if the third person disagrees, if everybody has a different opinion, we go with the guy in the middle. So, uh, this yep. should be fun. So let me get the scene switch here. Let me get my window up. This is the Halloween candy tier list. Uh, courtesy of tiermaker.com if you would like to contribute to this if you want to do this yourself um, I'll post a link in the chat actually here you go Yeah, and we'll, we'll, I made a small change to, uh, to the names of the tiers here but um, you get the idea and we'll publish ours out on our discord and our twitter so yeah. you, we can have a thread out there on the twitter where everyone's showing you know y'all fucking stupid <laughs> all up on there and yeah anybody watching now yeah you know chat out your answer so we want to hear what you think about candy too we love candy all right first one up hershey's cookies and cream bar first gone. Tier. love that shit first gone i i am not a fan of hershey's chocolate in general but the cookies and cream bar is an exception it is a fantastic chocolate bar all right so where we said eric you said you're at a a tier yeah or first gone no i'm 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 first gone i love that shit eric's jumping on him tom where are you at um, I'm at A tier because I, I think it's like it's excellent, it's solid, but it's not the first gone for me. It's usually the second. Okay. I think I'm I'm at an A with, with Tom here. A fantastic candy bar. Um also, uh Comrade Bunny, white chocolate is the worst. Get the fuck out of here. White chocolate's my favorite. <laughs> yes. But that's that's fair. Whatever. All right. Um we're not even gonna discuss this one. 
All right, next. Kit Kat. First call. <laughs> uh, Reese's Cup. Okay, well, let's uh, audibly say what you just did. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Reese's Cups, uh, obviously, first gone. Yep. Yeah. Can't, can't it, yeah. really like get better than that. Like, I will say, though. It's it, infinite it, tears right at the top. Just pin to number This is another exception because Reese's is a Hershey product, and I don't care for Hershey's regular chocolate very much, but when you put that peanut butter, magical peanut butter filling in the middle... It overrides the the crappy Hershey chocolate flavor for me, but I will also say though the white chocolate Reese's are my favorite. They are my jam, but um, I'm never gonna turn down a standard Reese's. Seasonal Reese's are the best, like the pumpkins, the trees, the eggs. Mm -hmm. Love those. All right, Kit Kat. This is where you guys are gonna hate me. Uh, Kit Kat is my last gone. What? A tier. It's just a bunch Um, of Hershey's chocolate (laughs) with with crispy in the middle. It's simple and perfect. I I, I kind of agree with Tom. I think it's an A tier. It's it's not like the greatest thing in the world, but it's really good. All like right. like take take uh like the 100 grand bar, right? It's like a bunch of shit. They try to do it really complicated. They're good, but Kit Kat to me is like this perfect blend of super simple idea and S tier execution. Can't get much oh, better than the Kit. I, I like the idea okay. of a simple bar, but if you're going to make a simple bar, use some good chocolate in it. Come on. <laughs> I like the Kit Kat chocolate, I got to say. Uh, okay. I also okay. like shit chocolate. Yeah. Can we agree that it's a monstrous act to unwrap that and then just bite into it? I do it. I admit it. Oh, really? You're that guy? I, I would. Uh, I am I the only uh, one here that breaks them off individually? I think it's I acceptable either way. Control. <laughs> I think it's sometimes monstrous. you just need it in your face all right it's a tier i'm overruled kit kat a tier yes. fair enough kit kat's yes. a popular one i get it I, I know i'm an outlier outlier in that regard all right hundred grand uh i'll be i'll be honest with you guys i know i've had one i don't remember the taste I've, i haven't had it in so long and i never had very many of them it's fine they're, they're okay i mean <sighs> And they're the last, B-tiered. The me. last gone B tier. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go last gone for this one. Last I, gone. I don't really care. I don't really I know go, enough, so I would go B, so in the in this term I think I would go last gone. Last gone? Okay. Yeah, yeah. we'll do last gone. Uh it's, also it's crunchy. Yeah. Uh, at least the way I view this last gone tier is I I'm not gonna turn one down if somebody's like, Hey, you want one of these? Sure. But I would never like willingly buy these candies yeah. in the last gone slot like all right these are the uh, this this is left i actually like them enough to eat them because i need sugar because diabetes yeah um, but yeah all right reese's pieces this is absolutely first gone for me first reese's gone. pieces are fantastic all right i'm gonna i'm gonna say first gone as well i was gonna say I, tom we're gonna shame you up i yeah, might I, I might like reese's pieces more than a standard reese's cup it's really close for me. It's I mean, really close. I'm not going to lie. If I want more savory, I'm going with Reese's Classic. But if I want just that sweet hit of peanut butter, it's the pieces. Dude, sitting in a movie, I don't get movie theater candy often. Sitting in a movie theater, fucking Reese's Pieces is one of the oh, go tos for me. Reese's Pieces. No, I'm, it's okay, Reese's I'm sorry, I'm Pieces, Eric. Pieces, it's guy. a word. It's an established it's word. Pieces. It's a Reese's Pieces. Come on. Okay, I'm going to say this. At a movie theater, I'm getting fucking bunch of crunch. What's bunch of crunch? Yeah, bunch yeah, of crunch. They're, they're like clustered ball, like a cluster, like a nerd. Only it's chocolate and yeah. bigger. Mm. Fucking bunch of crunch. Also, I see Butterfinger BB is called out. In, in Ooh, I forgot about those. Those oh, were yeah. great. They don't make them anymore, yeah. do they? I know. Like those have been discontinued well, for a while. They don't make fucking Butterfingers anymore. <laughs> Fuck you, Nestle. You piece of shit. Go steal more water from third world children. Ivana Ketchum uh, calls out in the chat, Reese's Fast Breaks and Sticks are so much better than the regular Reese's. Dude, Reese's Fast Break is a fantastic candy bar. Underrated, I think. It's yeah. always overshadowed, but I love I love a good Fast Break. All right, Sweet Tarts. The original Sweet Tarts. Ooh. I'm, I'm, a- I, I like them. I like them okay. I'm, like- I'm never buying them. Give them to someone else. Oh, you're that. Really? You don't even want them. Uh not like, a fan. I'll eat them if they're the only thing I have, but okay. I will give them out. They're my right. barter. If someone kind of <laughs> likes them, they're getting them. 
Uh, so I think we're, uh, yeah, I think we're compromising then with the last gone middle tier. Okay. Fair enough. All right, three musketeers. This one might be contentious. Give uh, it to someone little... else. Trash candy. Fuck it. What? Yep. <laughs> I'm close to it. I'm going last gone. Three musketeers like, I... are fantastic. No, nah. they're not, my friend. There's, there's a simple candy bar with like fine idea, great execution. Three musketeers is a bad idea, fine execution. No, it's too. There's nothing there. It's fucking fluff wrapped it's, in chocolate. Get a Marlboro bar if that's what you want. No, those things suck. Well, so do Three Musketeers. No, they it's don't. The it's fantastic. Thing. It's a good chocolate flavor with a cool texture. You get the contrast between the the, the chocolate coating and the fluffy inside. No, and then if you're feeling no contrast, and if you're feeling especially spicy, you can you can eat off all the outside chocolate first, and then you get a big giant bite of fluff at the end. The chocolate's not even that good. Like the outside chocolate. It's better than Hershey's crappy chocolate. I'll I take a three musketeers much. over a Kit Kat every day of the week. I, oh, I would I have chocolate. I would have chocolate. Have. Yeah. <sighs> I hate that this goes in last gone. Last gone. I hate it. Last gone. Democracy sucks. <laughs> this should at least be B tier. At least. Boo. No. Get out of here. What is this? Pixie sticks? Pixie sticks suck. Pixie I don't care. Sticks. Last gone. Uh, last ah. gone. Last gone. Unanimous. Right. Hey, we can agree on something. I'm going to say I, airheads are last gone what, for me. They're what, fine. They're, they're, they're the pixie they're, sticks, but yeah. they're not they're, great. Do you remember those pixie, remember the pixie sticks that were like way bigger than they should have been <laughs> back in like... Oh, yeah. But the, you know what? I'll, I'll settle on airheads because I like airheads more than pixie sticks. I'm going B. Airheads are B tier. Laffy Taffy though. Laffy Taffy. Oh, we do have that now. We'll get there yeah, later. We'll get there. Don't, don't jump ahead, Airheads. guys. Let's I didn't know, I didn't know it was time. on there. I didn't Airheads. know it was there. Airheads are B- uh, they're fine. B tier to me. Yeah, we'll set a B tier. B tier is good. All right. Bit of honey. This is like we an old school candy. Grandma tier. Grandma tier? There should be. I mean. I, the, yeah. Grand, grandma, head, yeah. grandma candy is fantastic. I don't care what you say. The I, last tier. I actually the like a bit of honey. I put these at like a B tier. I like them, except for they stick to your teeth so awful. Uh, like, that's yeah, why do. I, I got to put them last gone because of that. Last gone. Okay. All right. Bit of honey's last gone. Fair enough. Crunch bar. A tier. I was never a big fan of crunch bar. They're, they're B tier. I would. I would maybe give this to somebody. Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh. So it goes know. to B tier? I don't like so the texture. I know the texture is the point, but I, I don't care for the texture. I love the texture. All right, what do we got? Bit of honey is give to my dad. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. All right, this is this is going to I want to catch him. Hershey is gross. I want a five-pound Hershey bar for as a kid and never ate it. Yeah, you, you get it. Um, All right, I'm Necco gonna, wafers. I, oh, hang on, Necco wafers. Hang on, I it need is that. A straight up delicious candy. Wait, what? Yeah, B tier. I've never had it, dude. I'm adding a row for it. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a Necco wafer. Do you like Pepto Bismol tablets? I like Pepto. Do you and like yeah, Bismuth beer. tablets? Do you like chalky, disgusting candy? Remember this conversation when it comes to uh, why else is later. Th- wait? I did this is the one thing I thought would be unanimous. What do we do? I, I like Neckos, I do. I've never, I, I've never had it. I like chalk candy. So, what do we do? Where do we put it? I Last think time we, this happened, we went middle, like we yeah. hadn't, haven't had it as a bottom. So, it's what Adam said, I think. Give to someone else then, or last gone? I think it's last gone. I don't know. There's we'll no do tier we'll do, Let's do last, last gone. gone just to be All, safe. Right. All right. All right. Whatever. Oh, I am a sour patch kids. Blasphemy. Sour Ooh, patch kids. This I, one's good. Overrated. I'm about to commit some fucking blasphemy. It's a B tier. Overrated. I like them, but they're overrated. Uh, Agreed. I was going to actually possibly say first gone. I love me some sour patch kids, dude. What did you say, Tom? B tier? That's where yeah. I was gonna put them. I like Sour Patch Kids, okay, but they're going B tier. B tier, yep. Damn it. Sorry, Eric. Nerds, I love nerds. Hey. Hey. Nerds are fantastic. 
It's not the first gone, but it's close to it. It's B for me. It's A or B. Fine. I could go A or B. I don't know. We'll go A. I like nerds. Okay. Chewy says sour candy is not candy by definition. Candy is sweet. Sour is by definition not sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> fair, but uh, sour patch kids are sweet in the middle, dog. It's part of the marketing. Sour on the outside, right. sweet on the inside. Good and plenty. Can trash candy. Category? Give someone else. Like to, I would like to add a category for um, defeat your enemies with it. Because eating this or forcing someone else to eat it is a fucking war crime. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is one of the worst things that could be put in your bag. Like when someone hands you a good and plenty when you're a kid, trick or treating, you looked up at them with like the really face. Like, really? Why didn't yeah. you just give me a fucking apple? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> give me an apple. Sure, that's fine. I'll eat that shit. Good and plenty? No. No. There's no yeah, that... there's nothing good about good and plenty. Uh, so what Good and Plenty is, is it is black licorice. Black licorice, fucking. Mike and Ike's, basically. And I yeah, actually, I've grown to like black licorice within the last like couple of years. But I still, no, I don't even like the texture of Good and Plenty. All right, OG Twizzlers. Uh, A tier. Yeah, I'm an A tier. I'm I know. Gone. I know they're basically just flavored plastic. I know this, but I <laughs> but like them. I don't plastic. know why I like them, but I like them. They're last gone for me, but last gone. Yeah. Do you like red vines, Eric? Are you a red vines guy? They're, they're, they're okay. Um, I like Twizzler pull and peel. Better pull texture, yeah. better flavor. I do yeah. prefer pull and peel, um, but I like the strawberry flavor more than the cherry personally. Either yes, way, those are. I also, actually, also remember getting a five pound bag of that and destroying it in your bedroom. The um, they make watermelon pull and peel, which is pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> Fucking That's comrade expensive. bunny just broke me. Oh no! Um, Twizzlers make a nice sound when slapping your sister. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Dots. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't, I don't like dots that much. They're okay. I, I think they're solid. B or last gone. They're, I mean, probably last gone, but I'll eat them for sure. They're last gone just because texture. They're another one of those really stick to your teeth, nasty kind of. Yeah. All right. It's understandable. Uh, OG M Ms. I can kind of take them or gone. leave them personally. B tier. B tier. Mm. It's the worst of the M Ms in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Agreed, Agreed there for sure. We'll go B tier. There we go. M Ms are okay, but peanut M Ms are are definitely better is, for me. So this Tom's video. doing the same thing I'm thinking right now. What the fuck is this? I was gonna say is that Laffy Taffy, but this is Laffy Taffy. Oh, hold on, that's gum. I see I think Wrigley's. I'm blind. Am I blind? Oh, it's gum. gum chewing, chewing gum. gum? Who gives this? people chewing gum for Halloween? Tom, you never got that like the twenty five cent packs that you get like with five sticks of gum. I used to get that Not shit. Halloween. Not in Halloween. Y'all's in rich neighborhoods, man. <laughs> I was in the same neighborhood you were. Where did you get those stupid things? Should we add a, a thing for WTF? Because that's what this is. Gum is not candy. <laughs> that's yeah, a fuck. decent call out. But no, that that's Wrigley's double man. That being top, said, right? I, I chew gum a lot, like it work, but as a Halloween candy? Ugh. Well, I'm particular. Like I'll chew any kind of gum, but like to rate gum, it, it varies by the type of gum. For sure, exactly. yeah. You can't just throw a giant like bunch of like gum you in can here. either. Have so what do we do the, with this? What is, what's the what's the solution here? I haven't had it. Haven't yeah. had. We've had all of these. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, not for it's a, It shouldn't be on the list. Haven't had it. Would be my go-to. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You motherfuckers, this goes in the S tier. First gone, <sighs> Andy's mints. Yeah, yes. I, I love Andy's yes. mints, and I'm not usually, yeah. I'm not real big on mint and chocolate like a lot of people are. But something Me about too. the Andy's mint is just, it's the perfect, it's perfect combination. And the size always has you wanting more. <laughs> yeah, this is just that sure. little rectangle. First gone, Andy's mints. You got to cleanse the palate with some minty chocolate after all of your uh, Reese's pieces and after Reese's your cups. Unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks for. Five ninety nine. <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. Uh, runs. A tier. Runs are good. 
I'm going uh give to I'm someone else. I'm going B tier. I'll give it to someone else. They're right, okay B-tier. flavor and I don't like the texture. I actually like the texture. It's pretty good. Laffy Taffy, A tier? A. Laffy Taffy is the best. Laffy Taffy is fantastic. Yeah. What's your favorite flavor of Laffy Taffy? Uh is the white for a while. I don't remember what it was, but I like Wait, there's a white one? With that. No, it you're thinking of airheads. You're thinking airheads. of airheads. No, no. Oh, it's airhead white. Damn it. I don't remember my Laffy Taffy favor. I just like Laffy they Taffy. Had, they had a good pink one. Pink, ban- banana. Uh, banana is fantastic. But yeah, pink. I would always banana. be the kid that wouldn't chew it enough, and I would be afraid I was choking because I'd just like bum, 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 swallow. <laughs> All right. All I right. just realized there's multiple of these in here. So these Holy are, shit. These, we need a grandma tier. Yeah. These are Werther's Original Soft Caramels. Soft? Soft oh, caramels. the soft caramels? I literally have a First bag of one. There. First, First one. one. Those yeah. are great. Those are great. I don't care what anybody says. Werther's Original, Old People Candy, fantastic candy. I don't yep. care. Werther's are fantastic. What about these little strawberry things? You know what these A-tier. are. I don't know what they're called, but we've all had uh, them. Although, although huh? okay, okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, haven't had it fresh, but... <laughs> The, I don't. The that's because they were all they were all made in 1960, and they just keep yeah, so recycling. It's like candy corn, <laughs> super stale. Like you kind of bite into it, and you're afraid that you'll never get your mouth like opened up again. Then yeah, that's going to be first gone. I'm going. Um, I think these are I'm like going A, B. All right, so we're defaulting to A, middle ground. I think for they're us. under greatly underrated candy. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Hershey's Kisses, I would give Last these gone. to somebody else. I was going to say B, so it sounds like it goes Last under gone. Last Gone. Yeah. It's just For some reason, the camp. last the last time I had a Hershey's Kiss, it was like even worse than just a regular Hershey's bar. It's like, are they using even worse chocolate for the Kisses, or is it just like That's my That's why I like the Kisses more. Really? Okay. So the Kisses... The white chocolate swirl ones like the hugs, are really the good. Hugs are, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. The hugs are good. And um, Christmas time, they do candy cane ones that are absolutely crack. Like I will oh, sit yeah. and eat almost, I will sit and yeah. eat almost the whole bag of those things. I don't know why. I've never heard you call that before. <laughs> uh, standard regular milk chocolate Hershey's bar. Give Last it to someone else. I don't, All right. I don't hate Last it enough gone. to give it away, but I don't like it. Yep. Uh, Mike and Ike's. I'm not big on my Give it to someone else. Last con for me, I think. I would eat them, but eh. Yeah, they're... Ah, Snickers. Old Faithful. A-tier. <sighs> What'd you Snickers? just say? Yeah, I said A tier. A tier? Oh, I thought you said B tier. I was about to fight no. you. I, um, could, I could go A or B, but uh, I don't know. I, th- I think it's a first. decent A tier candy. Yeah. All right. Comrade Bunny calls out Frozen. Frozen Snickers first. Frozen call. Snickers are better than everything on this list. Frozen Snickers are like the best ice cream thing that exists. I'm saying Snickers, especially the type you get at Halloween, is the bite oh, size ones. Are she yeah. talking about freezing an actual Snickers bar or is she talking about the Snickers ice cream bar? Oh, no. Like Snickers ice cream is not even first gone. It's never made at home from the store. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, pretty much. But no, but like, to me, like a frozen Snickers would be first gone. To me, the uh, Snickers Halloween bite size, best Snickers possible, first gone for me. Yeah. It's the perfect ratio. So regular Snickers, we're going A tier? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's in the middle. It's solid, yeah. I'm never disappointed with the Snickers, even if I'm not in the mood for a Snickers. Yeah. Almond Joy? Give that shit to uh, someone else. I'll be Light honest. that shit on fire. I have never liked coconut, but I'm starting yeah. to sort of like coconut stuff so i haven't had an almond joy since i've sort of started liking coconut so i don't know where i stand with this but if you guys are both going to give to someone else we're giving these bad boys to someone else i agree with comrade bunny that is a mom candy my mom yeah. loved that almond shit. joy is mom candy yeah. i didn't know that yeah yeah Smiggle says, my wife likes Almond Joy. So, yes, it seems to be consistent so far. <laughs> All right. Uh, Baby Ruth. I think these are underrated. I like Baby Ruth. I think it's a B. I think it's a B. I think it's me. a last gone. Last gone? Yeah. All right. So, we'll go B. Let's B. I, I like the, it's like some caramel, some peanuts, a little chocolate. It's yeah. kind of, it's like a worst Snickers. 
It's like a, right. it's, a, it's a it's a worse Snickers, but a better payday. Or uh, Ooh, or fight words. It. It's basically a payday with, with chocolate around it, isn't it? Paydays are a lot more caramel. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right, uh, the caramel <sighs> apple pops. All right, if I, if I really don't care about these, ready to ban me? Uh, give to someone else. Fuck that shit. It's nasty. I like them. Last I, it's for me. another. One. <sighs> I was thinking last gone or B, so I'll go last gone. Yeah, last. I'm gone. a sucker cruncher. We're running and out of room. These are covered in, this in last gone. caramel. We're running out of room in this last gone tier. It'll wrap. It'll I know, but I know, but we're. I, I mean, this is a weird. Yeah, we're list. filling it up. Oh right, my what is god. This? Charleston, Charleston Chew? Charleston what year Chew? is it? Yeah. <laughs> I've never had one. I don't know I that have... I've had one. I maybe have tried yeah. one once a long time ago, and I don't remember it, so it couldn't have been I'm that good. I'm throwing that and haven't had it because, eh. We'll put it haven't had it. I can't remember what it tastes like, so. <laughs> Dad candy. <laughs> Dad candy, yeah, for sure. Mr. Goodbar, I don't A-tier. really. Uh, A tier. A. Yeah. Last gone for me. Really? A? Ah, Mr. chocolate Goodbar? and peanuts, man. The peanuts go really well with the shitty Hershey chocolate. Without caramel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Just peanuts chocolate. Uh, it's good. What is that? Double bubble? Uh, I'm going to say yeah. give to someone else. Last gone. Okay. Uh, it's another at, one of those things I don't view it as candy. Tom's, Tom's and B. So this is yeah. last gone by default. I think that it's got a good flavor that lasts for all of four minutes. I, I thought you were going to say four seconds. Well, I okay. <laughs> I exaggerated. And then it starts to taste really bad when the flavor goes away. Like it doesn't just like most gum, once the flavor goes away, it tastes like kind of nothing. (laughs) But these taste actively bad once you get to that point. It does have bad texture for gum too, I feel. Swedish fish. First gone for me. I love Swedish fish. Really? Yes. Fantastic. Probably my favorite like fruit-ish candy. It's a B tier for me. B? They're okay. Tom, what did you say? I said A. A. Okay, I guess we're going A. I'll I'll, I'll allow it. Minavi says I prefer the Swedish fish shot. What is that? What? What even is it's that? It's a shot. It tastes like Swedish fish. Wait. There, yeah. There's a liquor combination that tastes like Swedish fish. Huh. Yeah. That sounds dangerous. It is. <laughs> Tom I've speaks for the experience. Once. I don't remember the night. <laughs> Aspect says happy four years. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks for hey, popping thanks. into the cast. Uh, blow pop. Last gone B-tier. for me. B. All right, B tier. Blow B, pop. It's, it's solid. What's your favorite flavor of blow pop? Purple. Easy. I'm not a flavor guy when it comes to those things. You just don't care. It's weird. Oh, no, actually, no green, like the sour apple thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's you fair. can have all my fucking sour apple blow pops. All right, fireballs. Give someone else for me. I don't like yeah, cinnamon candy. Else. I. Not a cinnamon candy guy. I like cinnamon candy, but Fireball is just bad. I don't like jawbreakers. I chew things. Um, those like fruit, those fruit tootsie roll things. Fruit tootsie rolls, okay. First gone. Those are good. I think the I think they're underrated. I was gonna say A, but yeah, first gone. Oops. Okay, so the vanilla ones and the blue wrapper, absolutely first gone. Everything else is A, but those vanilla ones are legit. Caveat: they have to be fresh. Yeah. Yeah, like those yeah, stales those. really go downfill fast. First gone, there they are. All right. Aspect says Fun. Starburst, Sour Patch, Andes, and Gummy Bears goaded. Yeah. Fair enough. Fun Bell dip. Uh, give to someone else. Fun dip sucks. Don't even let it go into your bag. <laughs> oh, gone. that that bad. Yeah, okay. These, Dude, these... it's fucking Kool Aid with a plastic thing you can eat. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I wonder what it would taste like if you just mixed it in some water. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to make you try this today. All right. Uh, what are they? Tootsie Pops. I like Tootsie Pops. I like them more uh, than Blow Pops. I'm going to say they're A tier. I, I put them B tier. I was going to put B, I, I, yeah, B tier for sure for okay. me. I put them the same as Blow Pops. Smiggle says, wait, why is Baby Ruth in B tier? Because it's a solid because candy bar that, that it, is okay. I, I was going to put it in A tier, personally. It's a worse version of the Snickers. Yeah, that's a good way of putting that. Fruit roll-ups. It's not a I don't, candy. I don't, I don't see these. I mean, I get it. It is basically candy. I've, but 
I, I've gotten it every once in a while for Halloween. I love a good fruit roll up though. I think it's A tier. Yeah. I'm going I was going to say first go on. So sure. <laughs> I will um, say, so I don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to eat them, but um, I just mash it into like a ball and then just eat it all. Like, mm-hmm. yep. I was gonna ask if anyone else did it that way. And you like, look like I was a one of those kid. I would peel like... out the shit. No, not anymore. <laughs> you look like one of those guys that has like way too much chewing tobacco in at once, just like this giant mouth. <laughs> all right. That's uh, so good. Similar vein here. We have gushers. I have never received these in Halloween. Fight me. That is very strange. I think I've never gone. had them. Gusher, Gushers. Wait. You've never had How Gushers? did you not have? No, no, no. I've never had them as Gushers. Halloween. As Halloween. Oh, as Halloween. Oh, okay. Okay. I've never had them for Halloween either. But I'm putting um, it in first. Halloween. Gushers, Somebody I was going to put Gushers, like back to that house. B tier for me. I was thinking A. I like them just as much as fruit roll ups. They're just a different type of thing. But I will do the same thing where I put an entire pack on my mouth at once. Mm-hmm. So I'm a heathen. A tier, the aspect. What, what's the mic you have, Adam? You've been looking for the name of it, and I can't find it. This is a Sure SM7B. Uh, Haribo Gold Bears, Gummy Bears. First one. Really? Yeah, especially the pineapple flavored ones, like the white ones. Oh, pineapple gummy bears are fantastic. I think yeah, the this gone. brand of gummy bear isn't the best, though. Um, what? If you want to have a life-changing gummy bear, get all the these gummy bears. Wait, Get what? say that again? Albany's? Albany's? A- A-L-B-A-N-E-S-E. They're in like a white hmm. package. They, okay. they're, they're like premium gummy bears. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but they're always, they are, they're always fresh and like they're never that like weird hard Ooh. texture that sometimes they get after a while. They're always they soft always and they have more flavors. It, it's just, oh, they're so good. Okay. Gummy but, bears uh, have the candy corn thing where ninety percent of the time you get them they're fucking stale. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like it's a B tier for me. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking B B for these. For this brand okay. B. But I would go first gone for that other brand, so you gotta try those. All right, the original Werther's original hard candy. First gone. First gone. Easy. I know we're going to get called boomers and stuff, but were those original? I, I go A tier with that one. Fantastic. I, I go A tier. It's Albanian, not Albanese. <laughs> I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about the candy. I'm pretty sure it's based out of Chicago. Heath Bar. Heath Bars are fantastic. I love Heath Bars. First gone. How do you feel about Heath Bars? I love toffee. Love toffee. I love toffee too. First gone? Yeah, I'm at first, first gone. gone. And just follow that up. Butterfinger, first gone. Fuck you, Butterfinger, first wait, gone. Wait, 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 wait. Are we talking pre-recipe verify. change, Butterfinger? Are we talking yes. as uh, most okay, recent so Butterfinger? Okay, so I'm talking. You give me any of them. No, fuck you. All right, <laughs> so original Butterfinger, first of the first gone. It is my top, top. This is my favorite candy of all time. Okay. Recipe change. It is a, I literally took one bite and threw the shit in the trash after going out and Jesus. goddamn purchasing it. So I cannot eat it. It is fucking disgusting. We've talked about this before, and now I understand why your opinion is so much stronger than mine is because it was your favorite of all time. So that I get that. They changed your baby. I thought it was not as good as I remember Butterfingers, but still pretty good and like... I could taste it. Maybe it was a little different, but I didn't taste enough of a difference to feel passionately about it. So, it, is, uh, it is foundationally different. Like that so, <laughs> right there. Like last year is the moment when I actually left my childhood because before then I thought there was still some happiness in the world. And I took a bite of that butterfinger and I realized, Oh Jesus. It's never going to be the same. Oh man. my God. Like, this world is pain. That's it's a tier a or S or a or first. I'm going to say first um, with the qualification that it's the old one. All right. We're going A tier. All right. right. Butterfinger is A tier. Uh, hot tamales. Give to someone else. Hot tamales suck. Last Fuck gone. Them. I'll eat them, but. Give to someone else. Give to someone else. Right. Cinnamon candy sucks. Uh, lemon heads. A tier. This is. Um, Give that shit away. I'm not big on lemon heads. They're okay. I'll eat them. This would have been the last con for me. 
Okay. Uh, give that, so give that guess, shit away from me, man. I guess it's uh, last gone. That's a last gone. No love for the Lemonheads. Nope. Fun fact, there's a band called the Lemonheads. My mom's favorite band. Uh, Tootsie Rolls. A tier. I like Tootsie Rolls. I would have put them last at like... I'm, I'm at a B tier. Eric doesn't okay. like the Tootsie Rolls as much. I, I'm not a huge Tootsie Rolls. Now, if you give me the Tootsie Roll candy bar, like they have one that actually comes in like a bar form that oh, you break yeah. off, oh. that's better than the individuals. Isn't it, isn't it weird how the shape of something can make it better even though it's literally the same substance? Like it's not even a different ratio of stuff because it's all homogenous. I think it's packaging because they can keep them fresher because it's an actual like uh, candy bar wrapping packaging. Oh, okay. That's true. Uh, Jolly Ranchers? Probably last gone for me. I like them okay. I'm going to say A. A tier? All right. Yeah. I will say the blue ones are the best by far. Personally. I disagree. I'm going to go that watermelon, the pink one. Watermelon. Yeah. Okay. I'm always if afraid you guys, I'm going to choke on them. If cool. you guys like the watermelon, those definitely try the watermelon Twizzlers pull and peel because it definitely tastes like a watermelon Jolly Rancher just with the texture of a pull and peel Twizzler. All right. All right, Junior Mitts. B, last gone. I'm going B. I think they're solid. Decent. Like They're fine. I'll easily eat a box of Junior Mints in a movie theater. But other than that, I don't seek them yeah. out. Yeah. I never seek them out. Oh, uh, Ring Pop. Last I, gone. I just don't yeah. care about yeah. these at all. I have no I, opinion. You know, I like them. I like them, but they're too fucking messy. I'm going to yeah. say give it to someone else. I don't like being sticky. I would never eat one. <laughs> Just as a policy, I prefer not to be sticky in general. Yeah, I would exactly. say laugh on myself. <laughs> like I would probably break it off and then just eat it like a jawbreaker or something. Yeah, last gone. Shit, I'm probably going to eat it because I have a sweet tooth sometimes, but yeah. And as uh, Smiggle said, yeah, ring pops for kids. Kids love that shit. Yeah. Because yeah. kids don't mind being sticky. Uh, Yeah. Payday. A. Give to someone else. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. stronger than I thought you would. Okay. Payday? Really? I, it's it's peanuts and chocolate. Or, uh, peanuts and caramel. I don't like the. I don't like peanuts all that much. Like they're they're fine. I'll eat peanuts, but I'm okay. not like get out of here. What candy? I want candy, and payday is like a shitty fucking granola bar. <laughs> I like payday. Um, well, it's kind of a plus and a minus. I like it because if I get one at work, like on my break or something, it's kind of filling. Like it, it sticks with yes. me. But if I'm and like, if I'm gorging down Halloween candy and trying a bunch of different stuff, I don't want to be full. So <laughs> um, that said, I've never gotten payday for Halloween because I've never seen a bite size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I have either. Uh, we're going B tier. Okay. Have we done nut rages yet? No, I don't think so. I don't think they're on the list, are they? All right, so this is getting weird now that the cropping is... We've gotten... We've expanded the graph, and now the cropping on the window is weird. So, all right, scrolling down. Toblerone. Ooh, first oh, gone man. or A for me, man. These things... First gone, but I've never seen Toblerone it. Toblerone are fantastic. Yeah, I've never seen that. In a Definitely not gotten... <laughs> not for Halloween. Yeah, no, I that, like... That's a rich, rich neighborhood thing. Yeah, for sure. You're going to go to that house two or three yeah. times, man. Getting that for your Halloween candy means you live in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, peanut M and M's, A tier for first me. Con. A -tier. First con, A tier, first con. Ah, damn A tier. It. But fantastic though. Peanut M and M's, excellent yes. candy. Probably the second uh, best. What is this? this? Mamba. Mamba. What's a mamba? mamba? I've seen them. I've never had it. All right, haven't had it. Whatever that is. Hopefully, it's amazing. I don't know. Milk duds. B. <sighs> They're solid. I God, really, really great. like caramel, but man, they stick to your teeth like no other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I love like it's caramel, a B so I'm, I'm torn on this one. It's a B tier for me, but like actual enjoyment, if I could ignore the teeth, they might be a first gone. I mean, their flavor's great. Yeah. But B tier um, is teeth, man. Yeah. Uh, Last gone, honestly. The teeth thing. Okay. Kobe. Milky Way. Is that a Milky Way? 
Yeah. Hey, so, first, first gone for me. To me, love a Milky to Way. To me, Milky Way is what Three Musketeer failed to try to do. Agreed. <laughs> like Did Milky you, Way is so much so good. Um, so the naming between the UK and the US versions are weird. So in the UK, what we eat as a Milky Way is more like a Mars bar there. And what they call Milky Way is what we call Three Musketeers. It's the same candy bar, but it's called a Milky Way in the UK. Hmm. Uh, That's unfortunate. They got a bad Milky Way, especially the caramel Milky Way. Uh, but yeah, Milky yeah, Way is an A-tier yeah. for me. Milky Way. Where, where were you at, Tom, with it? Uh, I'm going to say A. Okay. It's it's definitely up there for me, but it's it's not in I my do. Life. I like them more than Snickers, personally. I think so. Yeah, I think I'm in the same way. I don't. Uh, now and later, give to someone else. Now and later is just where Starburst changed my mind. No, can we can we make another tier called emergency dental work? Because like, <laughs> yeah, no, a, right? And chewing on a now and later, there's no. Difference. It's the same shit. All right, we're giving those to someone else. It's like the Get guy who found the the quartz mines where he made Baju- Bazooka Joe gum also makes now and later out of that same product. All right, I'm just noticing some of these are kind of memes, which is funny. A- an apple. Where do we rate an apple? I'm Last gonna, gone. I'm going to say B tier. I like apples in general. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily want them it could for be, Halloween. It I could be one, a I good palate cleanser. I will eat it, but I'm not happy I got it. But I will okay, say, though, know- it looks like a red delicious apple, which is like the worst kind of apple. Yeah, okay, suck. I'm going to say last one. Last gone. Sorry, Apple. Last gone. Okay, so you know what I really like about just fruit as a walking snack? Like, do you have any of these candies? Most of these candies. You've got fucking wrappers and trash. You don't want to be that asshole that litters. But if you have an apple, a banana, like even a fucking tomato as a hand fruit, if you're nuts, <laughs> if you're done with that shit, you just chuck it in the woods, man. It's nature. It goes back to whence it came. You're not <laughs> littering. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> would you like me to point out some fallacies in that argument or do you just want to continue on no, just just continue okay <laughs> Dobby calls out what the hell's going on in this cast this isn't video listen this is 72 pc is only like 60 percent video games anyway and it's halloween let us have some fun so we're, we're like, doing a tier list so of we're halloween, doing candy. halloween candy tier list uh we are mostly a food-based podcast raisinets i've never had one. Oh wait, and wait, i don't really? care to have one yeah, no, give it away. Okay. Uh, so, I guess we're giving it away because that's in the middle because I had away. it. Who uh, gives out toothbrush? <laughs> toothbrushes on Halloween. Those people? No, you can go burn in hell. So when I was a little kid, Easter time, um, my dad told my grandpa not to get me a big Easter basket because it's bad for my teeth and I'm a little kid. So my grandpa got me this giant freaking Easter basket just loaded down with candy and one toothbrush. Uh, that is amazing. That's, that's uh, fantastic. So, uh, toothbrush? <laughs> well, how do we even do this? Where do... Give it to someone else. I've got a toothbrush at yeah. home. Yeah. Or use it to clean your shoes. Um, Dobby's asking <laughs> for you to scroll up to see the S. Oh. Or the right, top tier. The S tier right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. got Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, Reese's Pieces, Andy's Mints, the Fruity Tootsie Rolls, were there soft caramel? Gushers, where there's original Heath, Butterfinger, the old version, because the new one shall not be named, yeah. and Tobler. Yes. No, Butterfinger went to A tier. I thought, uh, oh, yeah, never mind. Butterfinger. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna just clarification for how we're doing this with three people is um, if we all disagree, we go with whoever put it in the middle. Um, and then otherwise, it's democracy. So, two out of three, it goes to whatever the two said. Regardless, we're not averaging them out. Unless everybody disagrees. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where are we at here? Skittles. Let's I see. love Skittles, man. A tier for me. Last on. Hmm? I I don't like Skittles. Tropical Skittles are pretty good. Tropical Skittles, Skittles are the better no. Skittle. And Wildberry Skittles I are like Okay, so I'm going to say the Lime Skittle is infinitely better than the Green Apple version. They, I literally throw away all the green Skittles today, where they used to uh, be my favorite. Yeah. So where are we at with Skittles? Yeah, I, where what was your say a, a tier? If it had Skittles, if it had the lime, it's clearly an S tier candy for me. But mm-hmm. they don't. 
What is up with all these candy companies ruining themselves? <laughs> Changed a good thing, man. Yeah. All right, smart uh, smarties. Wrap First up, chalk. Give that away. First gone. Uh, Give it away. Uh, these are last gone for me, honestly. I'll eat them, but. Okay. So First, we're at last. Gone. So, Tom's a smarties guy. I love Dude, chalk. Do you eat them one at a time, or do you just like? <sighs> it depends on how on. fat. I'm Usually, he was the fucking. He was the chalk eater in first grade, like in the corner, got done cleaning the chalkboard, like picked up the stick and just started munching. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not? All right. Uh, Starburst. A. It's a good candy. I'm going I'm going B. I'm weird. Cause in Halloween you get the two packs. I open them up immediately to see what they are. I eat all the pinks and I save the rest for later. The pink ones are the best. So I'll, ones for I'll sure. say A. A tier? Yeah. Okay. Um, What are these? Sugar Babies? Sugar Daddy. Sugar, oh, Sugar Daddy. Daddy. The 1960s called. They want their candy back. That is another example of really fucking good flavor, but destroy your fucking teeth. I don't even remember yeah. what they taste like. It's I'm going to say last gone. Last gone? I'm giving it to someone else. Like, it's that bad for me. Oh. Like, teeth-wise. Uh... Okay, well, I guess they're last gone because I'd probably eat it, but I don't remember what they taste like that much. Candy corn, give it to someone else. I hate candy corn. It sucks. Right, it's awful. Let's get weird. Candy First corn gone. is just bad stale caramel. That's all it it's is. It's okay. Oh, Tom's gone. voice will not be heard. It's going to someone else because candy corn was all made in 1970, and that's why it's all fucking stale today. It was I... one bag. <laughs> couldn't move. It. <laughs> candy I corn. People candy have corn. strong opinions on candy corn. Candy corn is yeah. very contentious. I love so, it some candy. So we're both on giving to someone would, else, Eric. Yeah. Candy My mom would uh, mix it with peanuts, and if you eat it together, it does taste better. But just on its own, no, get that shit out of here. Tom awful. He voluntarily that. buys the stuff. <laughs> Who I even do. manufactures I, it? So, so I don't actually buy the candy corn because I think that's even the lower tier. I buy the candy corn pumpkins because they're slightly sweeter and they've got a more marshmallowy flavor to them. But okay. candy corn alone is pretty good. The brown candy corn is definitely under standard, but pumpkins are on top. Oh. That's the candy corn breakdown. It's all shit. Thank That's you my for breakdown. coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. Twix, first gone. Love first Twix. Gone. Fantastic candy bar. Left Twix, first gone. Right Twix, eat last. Uh, stupid marketing things that don't make any sense. They're both the same. Put Shh. them both in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> uh warheads um a tier i don't care about warheads at all warheads are great i just Fine. i stopped caring I might, about warheads. i might eat them at the end but last gone for me Tom? damn it sorry Eric. give to someone else give to someone else wow okay uh whoppers probably first gone give to someone else what? I love Whoppers. Dude, those are del great. Okay, all right. Uh, Have you ever had a Whopper that's kind of like hollow, like something messed up and it like sort of melted the inside so it ends up being like kind of chewy? I don't yes. hate those. I really don't. It's a little different. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm weird. So where are we at with so this? Tom, What's the consensus? This goes, this goes with what you there. say. It does. Where? A. A tier? Okay. All right. York Peppermint Patty. First gone. B, B tier. B. I would say B, yeah. Decent. Okay. This one is the one everybody hates, but I love Zero Bar. I have never had it. I love never Zero Bar. Really? Okay. So you haven't had it as a consensus. It's um, It's almond nougat and caramel covered in white chocolate. That sounds really okay. good. It's it's good. Yeah, I like it. I, like I, I can like I can see how people wouldn't like it because it's it's very different tasting. But it was it's always one of my. Um, I think it's like an, an underrated gym. All right, so let's show this list off. Let's real show quick. the let's list off. Peek. And uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and read this out for our or actually Adam you can read it out for yeah. our podcast listeners. All right, so Halloween candy tier list. The first gone. These are the best of the best as a general consensus between the three of us. Reese's Cups, 
Reese's Pieces, Andy's Mints, Werther's Original Caramel, like soft caramels, those like fruity Tootsie Roll things. I don't know what they're called. Uh, fruit chews, whatever. Uh, Werther's Original Hard Candy, Heath, Toblerone, and Twix. Yes, I know we're all scroll, men. Scroll up a little, Adam. There we go. Sorry. If you could. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, A tier, Hershey's Cookies and Cream Bar, Kit Kat, Rainbow Nerds, Twizzlers, Laffy Taffy, those strawberry hard candy things. That uh, your grandmother gets. That your great, yeah, grandma candy. Snickers, Mr. Good Bar, Swedish Fish, Fruit Roll Ups, Gushers. Uh, for some reason, those were on here. Um, Butterfinger, or. Um, yeah. Yeah. Butterfinger. Uh, Jolly Rancher, Peanut M&M's, Milky Way, Skittles, Starburst, and Whoppers. Uh, B-Tier, Airheads, Crunch Bar, Sour Patch Kids, uh, OG M&M's, Runtz, Baby Ruth, Blow Pop, Tootsie Pop, uh, Haribo, Gold Bear, Gummy Bears, Tootsie Rolls, Junior Mints, Payday, and York Peppermint Patty. Uh, Last Gone, these are ones that we'll eat, but these are our least favorite. Uh, 100 Grand? Sweet Tarts, Three Musketeers, I guess, um, <laughs> Pixie Sticks, Bit of Honey, Necco Wafers, Dots, Hershey's Kisses, Hershey's Candy Bar, Mike and Ike's, those Caramel Apple Pops, um, those, uh, what are the, is that Bazooka or Double Bubble? I can't double, tell. Double Bubble. Okay. Lemon Heads, Ring Pop, Milk Dud, um, an actual apple, <laughs> for some reason. An actual apple. <laughs> Uh, Smarties, uh, Sugar Daddy, and Warheads. Um, these give to someone else. We don't even want them. Uh, Good and Plenty, Almond Joy, Fireball, Fun Dip, Hot Tamales, Now and Laters, Raisinettes, Toothbrushes. Um, if you're giving kids toothbrushes for Halloween, shame on you. <laughs> and Candy Corn. And the ones we haven't had at all... Um, uh, we put this in haven't had, but this is just like a random assortment of chewing gum, which is stupid for a tier list because they're different ones. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Charleston Chew, Mamba, and Zero Bar. All right. Okay. Real talk. Real talk. What is yes. missing from this list is the ultimate in, in globe-shaped candies. Talk about peanut butter M&Ms. Clearly first gone. Clearly the best m M&M. and but peanut butter M and M's are fucking legit. They're up there with Reese's Pieces for me. Yeah, they're the only M and M I think yeah. I would potentially put above peanut. Them yeah. or maybe the um, the uh, Krispies. Krispies are actually really good too. The Krispies the are, are a tier for me. They're good, but it's not good enough that I would take them over peanut butter. Also, um, so in my area, some people would make caramel popcorn in the shape of a ball like homemade caramel popcorn mm-hmm. wrap it in saran wrap and give that out for halloween did you guys have any of that well, i mean adam you I might did because we were in the same town at the time yeah, but yeah. yeah. once and it was, I love it was okay caramel popcorn yeah huge fan all right so that's it uh let us know what your favorite halloween candies are and please don't be angry at us uh, at our decisions here i know people are very passionate about candy uh, us included. Uh, so yeah. So um, let's move on to the. Let's get back to the actual podcast normal stuff. Uh, some video game stuff, and more specifically, video game news. What's on the docket for today? We have a small amount of news today. The first uh, story is kind of a continuation of something we've talked about over the past couple of years at various countries regulating loot boxes. But loot boxes in FIFA have now been officially banned by the government of the Netherlands as unregulated gambling that targets children. So now FIFA can no longer sell or use loot boxes in their games in the Netherlands. Yeah, another one to fall. Nothing more to say, really. It's just yeah. Europe is way more strict when it comes to gambling, especially on things that could expose to children. So, yeah, I could expect to see more of these coming in the future. All right. Um, so next up is another one that Tom's probably fairly passionate about. And that is it's been reported that if you delete your if you're an Oculus user linked with your Facebook and you delete your Facebook, that you're losing all of your Oculus games for good. Yeah. 
Uh, so yes. you want to elaborate on some of the details on that, Tom? Uh, yeah. So it turns out that uh, there are some people who have linked their Facebook and Oculus accounts together because that's what Facebook wants people to do. Um, the unfortunate part is that, uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of those people, if they've deactivated or deleted their Facebook account, all their games just go away, even though they have totally separate accounts, um, or I guess accounts that were separate that are now joined. Uh, deleting one of those accounts means all of your stuff vanishes. So, uh, hey, if you're looking at buying that uh, Oculus Quest 2, just know that if anything happens to your Facebook account, if you link your Facebook and Oculus accounts in some cases, or if Facebook just decides that they don't like you that day, you can lose your entire VR gaming library. So uh, go buy something, literally anything else. Now, I thought if you if you deleted your account outright, you would lose everything that you bought on the Oculus store. But if you just deactivated your account, which most people do when they delete Facebook, um, because Ooh. you do have to go through some extra steps to actually fully delete the account permanently. Um, but I thought if you just deactivated your account, those purchases were still attached to that account. If you were to reactivate that account, you get your stuff back. Uh, some people are reporting that even just deactivating results in them losing all of their Oculus games. <sighs> so... Boy, oh boy. Uh, if that's confirmed, seems, that's... Uh, <laughs> right. ooh, to, like that. to me, it seems like Facebook looked at the question of what can we do to completely destroy our VR platform? And they've just decided to take that as a to-do list. Yeah. I honestly don't know what's going through their heads. How can you try to sell a service like this? It's shareholder stuff. It's all it is. It is, we have two different ecosystems. Let's force one into the other so that it looks better on uptick of membership. That's the only thing I could think of. There is no technical reason I could think of trying to join this. Like the amount of overhead for the two different systems, like, yeah, there's, there's some extra overhead. It's not going to be that much. And they are two different systems. Typically, you keep two different systems as two different fucking systems. Yeah. And I, I know we, we talked about this last week, but hey, if you say some like racist ass shit on the Steam forums and Valve decides to ban ban you for that stuff, you know what you get banned from? The forums. You don't lose your account. You just can't talk to people on the forums. And uh, now Facebook, like if you don't have your, your driver's license, blood type, and uh, a liver <laughs> sample sent to them, <laughs> then you lose all your fucking Oculus games. So fuck that. So By the way, you can find a Vive headset for fairly cheap. Our very own Magic Dave found one for a hundred bucks just this week. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Now, again, it's not the Quest, right? So it does require a PC. It's not a standalone headset. I know the Quest has got some cool selling points, but uh, you're signing up for a very Orwellian story. Really? The Quest has oh. excellent selling points aside from the Facebook thing. If you take the Facebook thing out yeah. of it, that is this hands down probably the best thing you could buy right now for a price to value ratio for sure i okay price i do want to call i do want to call something out real quick uh you call out the fact you're banned from facebook you lose your oculus that is true right now um but that was also because facebook was only a social platform where steam was a social platform second so yeah. they built those as different entities facebook hasn't had the i don't want to say time but they never initially planned on separating really so we, they may eventually soften that stance of Facebook ban doesn't result. Right now it's not that way, but I can see them doing some like kick from the kickback of this realizing, well, we'll ban you from Facebook, but you're still a valid user. So we'll leave your Oculus up because I'm, let's I'm be honest, just, taking both down stupid. Like I'm, I'm just concerned because, you know, like take a look at how many hours I've put into Beat Saber, into Pavlov. I literally have... Uh, over 3,000 hours of just VR gaming on Steam since I, I got my headset a couple years ago. Um, like, if for whatever reason, if Facebook decides to feel funny that day about my account, they snap their fingers and all my shit's gone. And there's literally nothing I can do to get any of it back. Uh, so actually, hackers are right now working and they have a, a proof of concept demo done to jailbreak the Quest 2 and remove the Facebook linking requirement. Which we uh, do which not officially crazy. condone in any capacity. You might not officially condone it. I full <laughs> fucking officially. 72 PC. 72 PC. <laughs> Tom does officially condone hacking your Quest 2. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Um, 
Halo Infinite director Chris Lee steps down from the company. Um, he's the second product lead or project lead for this. Um, it would normally be big news, but he had a reduced role already where they had effectively had two different leads, one over campaign, one over multiplayer. So he was more of a liaison liaison rather than an actual product manager per se. So it sucks, but I don't think it's as big as what the title makes it really feel like. So we'll see. I just want the damn game to come out already. But <laughs> 2020 has been rough on game development, so it's delayed, yeah, and I'm yeah. fine with that. Just make it good. That's understandable. Luckily, 2020 has only been hard on game development. There yeah, hasn't just really been any specifically game development. Just, yeah. just game <laughs> tests. That's it. Um, this one's kind of loaded. Uh, Hitman 3 coming to Switch as a cloud game. I think yeah. Tom might have um, kind of got excited when he heard this. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So we've seen this before, where some games on the on the Nintendo Switch will be way 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 bigger and more impressive than the switch has any right to run uh and that's because it doesn't actually run it uh we've seen in japan some games will launch as cloud games so the game is actually rendered and streamed over to the switch over an internet connection instead of being played on the hardware itself turns out that hitman 3 is coming to the nintendo switch through cloud gaming uh so the bad news is if you're taking your Switch mobile and you're not like tethering or using mobile internet, and maybe if you are, it's probably not a good idea anyway, but you won't be able to play it because it requires a fully active internet connection to stream the game to you. Mm. But hey, if you're at home and you only have a Switch and you want to play the latest and greatest Hitman game when it comes out, yeah, you can do that. Um, I'm going to get in there right now and give you my disclaimer of this is Nintendo. This is a current era internet issue meaning they will fuck this up to no end. This is probably not the best way to play Hitman 3. No, definitely not any, the best way. But Any cloud any service isn't the best way to play something because you are going to most likely have more input lag than you would normally. Yes. Um, but certain games, it doesn't matter anyway. But Ooh. either way, like it's if, if that's your only option and it, it can get games that wouldn't normally be able to run on the Switch to the Switch and people can enjoy it, then that's, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah. Single player games can compensate for that lag sometimes. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. So uh, kind of kind of like Control, which, by yeah. the way, like Control, the big game where they're like, oh, RTX lighting, and this is going to be the most beautiful thing ever, and you're going to have to have a supercomputer from space to run it. Uh, that's out on the Nintendo Switch today. You can buy that's Control cool. and play it as a cloud game on the Nintendo Switch. Control was a fantastic game. I loved Control so much. I need to get back uh, to it. I the really the combat was kind of fast though at parts, mm. and you could die pretty easily. So I'm wondering if if the input la how the input lag handles on the switch. Um, I know that depends on your network and all of that kind of stuff too. But it seems like mm. one of those games where that could definitely be a problem. But hopefully not. Yeah. Either way, uh, I think one of the coolest parts of Control really is just like the world building and the atmosphere and stuff too. So. Um, even if you, even if the combat is suffers a little bit from that, I think you could still really enjoy the game for sure. Yeah, yeah. love control. Well, everyone, I think that's all we got. Oh, that's all the things. Um, you guys have anything else you want to add in there before we um, get on out of here? Um, thanks again for listening to us and putting up with our our rants and and tangents and everything over these last four years and thank you uh, too for uh you know helping start this whole thing and inviting me to be a part of it i'm, I'm really happy i mean you were part of this iteration since day one yeah I yeah know, but you two were like hey you want to do this thing and i was like yeah I, yeah that sounds i fun. would like to, <laughs> and it has to been. thank you all for not kicking me out hey, uh, that, that's a hard one that's anytime. a hard yeah. one I mean, anyone who's dealt with Tom knows it's Tom. Yeah, you're, so. you're still on. You're still on thin ice, buddy. But happy to have you along so far. Uh, oh, uh, if there's anything you've taken away the past four years of watching the show. It's that 72 pin connector never condones piracy, hacking, going against end user policy agreements. But I do. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was aware. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and Tom. Also you want to know that my favorite part about us over the last four years? 
we stop talking about fucking Dark Souls, and I love that. So anyway, I had to rest. So I, you know, I haven't tried Dark you. Souls in a while. You know, I gave it that like second try because the first time I played it, I really didn't like it at all. And then you explained what it actually was, and I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool. You know, you you got to really work at it and and build your skills and learn to appreciate the fact that it subverts a lot of gaming expectations. Uh, not to mention that the world building is fantastic with a story that you have to really look okay, for. Okay, that's our 2020 <laughs> limit. That's our 2020 yeah. limit there. Metroidvania kind of now, world Dark building. Souls 3, I thought, really is where it started to come into form. I don't a lot of people prefer control. Dark Souls 1, and I know Dark Souls 2 is usually the one people like the least, but I think 3 is really where it, it really came into form. You know where the item locations are. You know the general hitboxes. Dark Souls the especially. It, yeah. The game is, it's, it's, which um, is actually it's a really cool... Because a, I can say Dark Souls, really Dark Souls. <laughs>